Pardon. Hello, chat room. How are you guys doing today? That I know that I am having an excellent morning and I'm very excited for round two. As everyone may notice, we're not joined by Msushi today. Instead, we have Kwan with us. Msushi had a family emergency and is unavailable, unfortunately, at the last moment. Um, but we've got a very cool person here with us today. Hi, everyone. I'm Kwan. Uh, Ransom Celeste, Ransom Arb, back in the day. Back in the day being like a year ago, a year and a half ago. Don't play the game too much anymore, so I won't be too familiar with the most recent all red berries strategies but uh i hope uh i can uh provide some apt commentary for the open stage of strawberry I'm showdown sure don't hesitate to pop off when you see something cool yeah no that's yeah no that's the plan and definitely quite a few new cool strats especially be looking out for um 2000 meters seated berry because you know that one changed a hundred times and it's changed again somehow <laughs> Way faster still. <clears throat> For those tuning in who missed yesterday, I'll go over the format briefly. Uh, players will have three hours to reset uh, to get to start all red berries runs. Um, and their goal is to get the fastest time they can in that time window. And then once that period ends, they can finish the run they're on. So you can use exclamation point LB or leaderboard to see the current standings. Um, the top 17 players will advance because, uh, Isaac is unable to play in bracket. So seeds two through 16 will, uh, advance to the next stage of the tournament or sorry, two through 17. Um, and one thing I'll mention today is that we've got a few players on there who are not able to play. Um, some who played last week, some who played yesterday. Uh, so their times are effectively locked in. And then a few more who are just adding for today. So definitely keep an eye out on those names with just dashes right now. As they will be looking to climb the leaderboard throughout the session. Yeah, no, it's really awesome taking a look at this leaderboard right now. Some very familiar names uh, on the leaderboard and some very unfamiliar names. I'm excited to see uh, what kind of times uh, everyone's going to be able to put up. Yeah, we've already seen a really significant difference from what I would have expected for the uh, top 16 or 17 here, getting so many people in the, the 52 minute mark. It's really cool seeing that managed in just day one with only three to four hours of runs. We'll be starting a little bit behind schedule today, um, but should be ready very shortly. Referees are checking all of our players, and we'll be good to go once that's done.
one thing I wanted to point it out um, was uh, two players that didn't play yesterday were uh, where are they? Where are they? Here we go. Jimmy Clyde and Rakungal. Both of them have PBs in the top 16 of our uh, entrance here. But we're not playing yesterday, so this may put some additional pressure on that bracket threshold. Um, if they're coming in with 51s by the end of the day, we may see uh, 51 being required to make it to bracket stage, which is uh, pretty crazy. Yeah, the standards are for ARP have very much risen since uh, the Silver of ARP has begun, which is really nice to see. I was talking to Carrie yesterday and was saying that I thought I unironically would not get into bracket unless I practiced for a few weeks ahead of time. <laughs> you know, that's yeah, crazy really to think about. A very competitive set of runners here, for sure. I'm really wondering what our actual cutoff for the top 17-ish is going to be here when we get around to the end of day two. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised at this point if it actually manages to sneak its way into the 50-minute mark. That would be pretty crazy. One other thing to keep an eye out for is that uh, Tom148 is not able to play today. So his time is what he's got, um, and it, if it's uh, if seven people pass him, no, if eight people pass him, then he's out. But I think he's got a decent shot. Mm -hmm. Sitting at fifty-one oh two right now for Tom, and has to keep that spot into seventeenth place to qualify, which currently seventeenth is fifty-two forty-five by Salt. Yeah, the 51 sort of, um, the, the 51 minute kind of window is very stacked at the moment. So we're probably going to see a lot of movements around the leaderboard today in that area as people try to um, claw their way onto the bracket stage. Another thing I'm interested in is how much just the uh, top five purely is going to shuffle around. Because we have all of the players in the top five except for... Well, no, I think all of them actually... Oh no, sorry, all five except for Vertil have, still have time before their PB. Like where their current um, run from the event isn't as fast as their PB. And I'm wondering if there's any chances that they could be PBing even further. Like Vertil has a 48.10, and I think that was Vertil's actual Allred Berries PB now. But all the rest of them haven't quite met their real Allred Berries PBs with this event. Yeah, I think we saw about 20 players PB yesterday. It would be definitely cool to see a few more join that club. Which is actually kind of crazy. If they all submitted times, the SRC team would be swamped. But I don't think they <laughs> ended up doing that. Not yet, at least. Probably a lot of them playing today as well. I'm sure the flood will come in the next couple of days. I can report that seven of the 28 runs currently in the SRC queue are all Red Berries related, which is more than usual. Very happy to see that. Yeah, I'm sure this has been said a ton before, but it's it's crazy seeing uh, the, the whole summer of ARP shtick come into fruition. Uh, no one, I, I, I definitely did not believe 
<laughs> like people when when everyone's like, hey, summer 2023, it's gonna be summer of ARB. Yeah, yeah, gamers, we're gonna run ARB, and <laughs> <laughs> you're, the whole ARB thing was like, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. Alrighty, and with that, day two is underway. Here we've got Isaac, Tio, Gooms, and Vertol, our four top placements at the moment. Or am I right in that? Surely. Yes. <clears throat> Starting off their runs. Oh, the second session. Alright, let's go. Curious to see how aggressively these four reset today. Um, Gooms and Vertol definitely looking to gun down Tio's time. I think, you know, they're effectively playing for the top one seed in bracket, these three. Um, and then with Isaac just grinding for a 44 PB, I think. But he's here. And he's having yeah, I, I, Isaac's just doing PB attempts just in a different <laughs> environment. It's really, it's really funny. But I know the other three are definitely looking to, to gun for that top spot. Definitely curious to see how they uh, play throughout the session today. Yeah, being of a higher seed is of some import because that would make the early stages of bracket a little bit, a little bit easier on them, a little bit more of a nice time getting through. But Ari sitting in the top four or so here is a pretty comfortable place to be. Yeah, they're effectively locked in for the next stage. I think uh, it would be quite the turn of events if 16 people managed to get a lower 47 than what Tio has. Would you reckon, excluding Isaac, everyone in the top five right now has the has the potential to be top seed, uh, like Tio, Virtual Gooms, and how about Luca and Ennen? Like, like uh, in in your guys' opinion, Luca definitely. Ennen, I think, has already PB'd twice. I think it would be a a tall order to have them PB by another 40 seconds, but Luca oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. we saw them on pace actually, their 48 yesterday um, had quite an unfortunate summit and was on pace to be faster than Tio's current run um, in, until about 1.5k I think. Uh, yeah, well, somewhere in there. Yeah. Somewhere in the middle of summit, Luca was running into trouble, but entering summit was on potential like a low 47 pace. We've seen, I think, a bit of that as well from Gooms, I think. And given that the you know PVs of these runners, we have a Tio sitting at 4701. He could still just be pushing his time up further to make it harder to get that uh, top seed away from him. But yeah, definitely a chance for it to shuffle around a little bit more here in the top. Yeah, that's definitely very exciting. We'll have to keep an eye on that as today progresses and just to clarify yes so, so today is going to be the, the last day of the open stage correct yes gotcha. yep. so we had we had an unrestreamed session on july 30th for some people who couldn't make this weekend and then yesterday and today are the primary days at the end of today um everything will be locked in you know barring changes for someone realizing they're not available um so we'll gotcha. do our best to communicate that in our discord but um yeah, in the um, upcoming days, we'll uh, get more volunteers added for the bracket stage, and definitely excited to have some more people helping out make this thing happen. And we have Tio sure. here already going for a reset. Didn't have the best time, I believe, going through the end of City. Just starting it over already. With the fact that they have some solid runs here in the first place, like we mentioned a little bit ago, some more aggressive resetting is very possible. And we got Gooms just practicing the final room of City here. Probably messed up the corner kick first time through and is not happy about it. Happens to the best of us though. That corner kick feels weird, even at the best of times. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things where you just have to mess up the first couple times when you boot up the game. And uh, you just have to tank it and warm up. Gooms also resetting. I mean, yeah, obviously, since uh, messed up the last bit, but... Definitely a different vibe from yesterday already. 
Uh, we were seeing much fewer players resetting at the start of yesterday's session, just looking to get a time on the board. Yeah, I, I was a little bit surprised seeing almost all of the runners go for a practically a no reset from the very beginning. We only had a few that didn't, and that was nice for populating the board, but it wasn't a requirement this time around like it had been for the previous CTT events. So still, still nice to see, though, that we got runs out early just trying to make sure everyone had a spot. Yeah, I feel yeah, like I... with a category, as long as our, like, e uh, if you go too ham on the on the resets, especially early on with the out of time on the board, it can get lead to some very risky, like, like, like uh, last minute, you no know, resets, which might not uh, be too ideal, which is what I think uh, people were trying to avoid. Yeah, getting a run in at the start of the session when you're fresh makes sense to me, I think. And I think, you know, also just the psychology of not having a time up there, you're willing to take um, more mistakes. Yeah, it feels yeah. a little bit more urgent getting any time on there at all than when, you, uh, when you're missing one completely. Isaac and Vertal right now about three seconds apart, moving through old site here. This is a little bit tighter than I would have expected. Going nice and easy though through the first few chapters. I'm sure, that we'll get a little bit more varied come come resort though. It's almost always a difference maker. Isaac taking the top route, going up to the upper barriers in the end of intervention here. Riddle's a fan of the bottom though. I think in terms of time, it doesn't really make too much difference. Like it might only be point one or so faster to take the top. But it's always cool seeing small routing differences. Wondering if we'll see Arbitas awake from either of these gamers. Isaac attempting it at the very least. Looking pretty Ooh, good. Ooh, getting it. Nice. Vertal as well. Take a look at that. All good stuff. Oh my Outside. goodness. It's getting Arbitas my awake. Goodness. First run of the day. Oh. Isaac missing the corner jump, Virto pulls ahead, actually. I, I, I'm not in IGT, uh, I think they're around even. We'll have to see. Isaac's yeah, still one second ahead. In here. Yeah. Wow, that is incredibly close. Yeah, no, first run looking really good so far for Isaac and Virto. Uh, Tio, however, uh, Goom's finishing off Forsaken City, but uh, Tio's just hanging out and starts probably not getting the the starts that he he uh, hopes for. It's all good yeah, though. Tio was having a little bit more trouble in City today, but I'm sure he'll get through it. Reset yeah. City will not be Reset City all day long. Oh, never mind, Goom's is back in Prologue. I Nice buffer demo from Virgil. Of these four players, Teo and Gooms are the farthest away from their PBs currently. Uh, both about 50 seconds off, so definitely keep an eye on these players throughout the event to see if uh, they can close that gap. I think both of them are looking to get some low 47s today. Um, and I know Virgil is trying to keep up with them. He's been doing lots of practice for this event, and it's cool to see him uh, branching out from the comfort of any percent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's really awesome seeing these names, which I've, I've seen at the very top of the any percent leaderboard, um, taking on ARB and just absolutely destroying the category. It's been really fun to see. Yeah, I think Vertal was one to pretty soon after, or even possibly before the announcement of Summer of R being an actual event. I think by that point he was jumping into practice pretty quickly for all red berries. It does take a pretty significant chunk of time to learn the category thoroughly. But then again, you also get some players like Catman on the leaderboard today, who, from what I've heard, learned the category in only two to three weeks and was already getting times in like the 50-51 range. So that was really impressive. Yeah, that's awesome to see. Yeah, that's, I mean, a, that's a remarkable rate of improvement for sure. 
Yeah, since Arbus, I mean, I, I'd imagine Ar Arbus is such a movement heavy category that like the, just the skill that you gain from any percent carries over quite well. It's just you act you actually having to sit down and learn the category and the individual in individual strats is uh, the sort of uh, bump that you have to get get across. I'm sure it's especially nice for players who opted for 6B in their any percent because then that yeah. extra time save carries over now nicely into ARB. We have a new set of players with us now. We've got Blaze Gorlava and Super Meat Boy, our two Canadian runners up at the top, as well as Cookie and Satellite Sam here. Looks like we're having some resets going on for Blaze, given that he's still in a city here. But Super Meat Boy and Sam both in resort at the moment. Sam without a time on the leaderboard yet. It looks like oh, he's going to be following what everyone else was kind of doing yesterday to uh, get a time on the leaderboard first. From what I can yep. tell with Sam and Super Meat Boy here, they seem to be roughly equal in IGT, just at uh, different points in their run. So real time apart from each other by a good 10-15 seconds, but and a pretty pretty even pace here. A stat that I will mention from yesterday, uh, collected by Dragon512, is that um, 22 of the players yesterday played 6B and 16 used 6A. So about a 60-40 split there. Um, just a little interesting fact for you. Hey, that's super cool. And just for anyone who might not be familiar with the uh, difference for 6A versus 6B in Allward Berries, Running 6B gives you an extra red heart, uh, and that extra heart you won't have to then collect earlier at the start of Old Sight, which saves about another 20 seconds on top of the 10 to 15 seconds that can be saved just from running 6B in the first place. So the route difference saves somewhere in the range of 30 to 40 seconds, although 6B can be a lot more punishing of a level, so that can balance itself out pretty easily if things go wrong. Yeah. With the extra time save, uh, with it, because you do get the heart, it, 6B becomes a much more appealing option, which is why many, uh, almost everyone sort of goes for it in all red berries. But yeah, 6B can just absolutely just, just destroy your run if you're not too careful. Very known run killer. Super Meat Boy on the heart backtrack. Looking very good. The satellite sign not too far behind. Yeah, they're not. They're they're pretty far apart in, in RTA, but yeah, we prop was pretty much hang on with his analysis. That's they're pretty even in pace right now. Cookie yeah, also entering. Uh, sorry, yeah, Cook Cookie also entering resort. Yeah, Sam a few seconds behind as he goes through that save and quit. And then, of course, just like we mentioned yesterday, since there's no spawn point in the bottom of that room, it puts you at the top, which skips a nice three to four rooms of backtracking, which is why this heart order is so fast. Turkey almost having some trouble getting the falling block sorted out there. Excellent buffer to climb jump off the first one and ran, ran out of stamina going for the last, but still got him down with the uh, funny bit of grab activation you can do even without stamina. Yeah, very easy mistake to make. It's. Uh something that can catch you off guard and can lead to a death if you're not careful. It's one of those weird places where you intentionally have to go a little bit slower. Yeah. You don't really run into that too often. Blaze well, getting out of city with a 340 here. Hanging on to a pretty decent pace early on there regarding these 5728 event PB here. And yeah, it's looking like Satellite Sam and Super Meat Boy are still holding relatively pretty close to each other here because we had Super Meat Boy entering Elevator Shaft at around 1215-ish and Sam I think has fallen just like a little bit behind that since still has to go for the berry under the bridge here. But within 20-30 seconds of each other on the IGT. Looking at Blaze's category PB, uh, he's got a 56, so 
potentially looking to improve his time by a minute or two today. Maybe get a, a real PB here. Yeah, always excited to see more real RPBs come through in the event. Definitely is encouraging people to run the category a lot more. There's a bit of a habit in the Celeste community to spend a lot of time practicing and not nearly as much time running full game. And I'm too, I too am a victim of that habit, I would say. But, You're one of the yeah, foremost victims of I that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> a known serial practicer over here. Running full game, though, is always fun when it, ha when it does happen. Yeah, just as the categories get longer and longer, or get longer, considering like Arvid and Hondo, uh, in, in Prop's case, it's, it gets really daunting to just start full game runs. Yeah, eventually though, just getting around to runs in the first place ends up being more important. Because yeah. if you're practicing for so much time and not ever doing runs, what were you practicing for? Uh, practice itself can be fun. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, keeping an eye on Cookie. I've been really enjoying the strats which uh, they've been pulling out. It's like uh, it's a good mix of uh, comfort strats and just some uh, some of the faster strats. It's uh, really cool seeing the variety in uh, their strat choice. When we were talking about PBs in the 56 range earlier, Cookie actually getting an 8 second PB yesterday to get to that spot. Oh, hell yeah. Ooh, Sam taking it up in the last Ashira room. This room absolutely just... Yeah, no, this, this room just screws you in uh, in ARP. And the death cycle is just, it's really... You're going to have a hard time recovering from that. But Sam makes it through. All good. How do you I mean, one of the bridge? issues... Uh, one of the big issues with the death cycle there is that you don't have just one. You can have up to three if you're playing all red berries there. If you got the first berry, both or neither, you can have, might want to learn a different thing for all three if you're trying to be really, uh, really thorough. Trying to read the live split for Blaze there. Is that a 750 exit? Can't quite um, tell. A little bit too small. <laughs> it's occasionally nice oops. to catch live split, but. Oh, he doesn't have to in the meantime run. <laughs> I was like. Seven flat in the chat, apparently. <clears throat> That's a pretty nice time. Yeah. Oh, Super Meat Boy going for a reset, um, out of bridge, so it looks like he's going to be shooting for a much better time than uh, he has on the board right now, aiming high, that's what you like to see. Yeah, Blaze is actually 20 seconds ahead of uh, his best run from yesterday, out of sight here. Nice, getting a good start going here then. Okay, now entering presidential suites. I'm interested in seeing uh, the strat choice for Shiro here. They've been playing very smoothly so far. It's been a joy to watch. Yeah, I think one of the things I end up enjoying particularly about watching other Celeste speedrunners is Especially the moments where things just are going well, even if the strat differences might be notably safer than other runners, if things are going smoothly, it always feels good. Because it means the practice was converting itself very well into runs, and I'm sure that's satisfying on the runner side. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure, of course. Celeste is a game where strategies are, you know, often very small amounts of time saved. So any any specific thing, if it's not working for you, you can usually find an alternative that doesn't lose too much time. Yeah, especially in a uh, such a consistency focused and long category like ARB, I think uh, it, it becomes a lot more reasonable to be using safer strats. Switching over to Whips, Ponkle, Savadra, and Tent Felix. Uh, seems like uh, Tent Felix seems to be on pretty good pace so far. Uh, entering clip face in just a few seconds. And this is, of course, Tent Felix's first uh, option for runs as they were not here yesterday. So we'll be seeing him probably finishing out this run, you know, no matter what happens, just to get a time on the board. Um, and Savadra, Savadra not far behind. Um, and this is one of those players looking to push for that those top 16 times. Um, about a minute off at the moment, and definitely looking to get a 52 today, which would be a category PB um, to secure that spot. Definitely one of the names to keep your eyes on on the later board as the session progresses. Yeah, and a reminder that the cutoff right now is still at salt at 52 minutes and 45 seconds. Any time to any time faster than that would allow people to be making it into the uh, top 16 for bracket. Yeah, and actually Ponko with a very similar time to Sev at the moment, uh, just eight seconds behind. No, I can't read. Uh, 43 seconds behind. We all have reading issues sometimes. Slight We're difference at IGT, IGT, but uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, Temp Felix and Savadra syncing up. Oh my goodness, yeah. Yeah, we were syncing up too there, Colin. That's why we had the same. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the one. <laughs> yeah, it was very close here, though. Only, Photo what is finish. that, about eight, eight, nine seconds apart from each other heading into the end of Ridge. Yeah, and Savadra, 40 seconds ahead of his pace from yesterday. Uh, definitely uh, looking to capitalize on this. This could be a really, really big run for him. Yeah. After watching so much any percent, it can it's it's always really fun to sort of see like the sort of time saves you see in ARP. Um, especially like at the at like not I guess at top level as well, but more so at at like um the, the mid tier level. Cause it, the time saves are just like a magnitude larger. It's like you're either you can be like forty seconds ahead one moment and then like fifty seconds behind the next moment. <laughs> More than any percent, you're kind of looking at like you know sub ten or sub twenty kind of kind of pace differences. Yeah, it yeah, can be really note. brutal when things go wrong and huge highs sometimes when levels really click. Yeah, on that note, Wibs is also about a minute ahead into Ridge here, um, looking to move out of that fifty-six group, push lower into the fifties range. Calling back to just a little bit, Ponko was unfortunately having trouble in the end of a end of resort final room, having to go through it a second time after already having collected all the berries. So got a bit of red splits going on for Ponko, but I don't think too far behind PB pace going into this chapter. Yeah, Ponko will push on. More time saves to be had soon enough. Wibbs unfortunately Seven. missing that last berry, going around for the wind cycle in this last room to start. That one can be a tricky one for sure. Yeah, that berry is a pesky one. Shoutouts to the odd bug uh, corner kick strat for that one. I've always, that's always, that strat's always had a soft spot in my heart. Seven temp, um, making light work of Temple Fairies. Uh, absolutely always enjoy uh, watching runners play this level. Probably one of the best IELs in the game, in my opinion. Um, I have caught wind that uh, there's been quite a few route improvements in ARB. I'm not sure if like they've been put into practice quite yet, but um, I, I've, I've, heard, I've caught wind of like a depth reroute and uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah, the uh, search rerouting them. 
there was a depths rewrite a while ago that you probably cut one of the where there's the option of working almost right to left on the top berries and then taking the depths corner boost in the end. Did you uh were you around for that one still? Yeah, I think I was still playing around that time, yeah. Well the newest one is a reroute for depths but sort of start really, where you do the top berries and start first, but yeah. then you unlock depths, turn around, grab the bottom berries, and then RTM and enter the depths checkpoint. And that's saving about a second and a half, two seconds for people at this point. So we had a few runners, uh, like uh, I think Isaac and Tio at the very least were going for it, possibly Gooms and Vertle as well. Um, beyond that, I am not quite sure. Oh uh, yeah, that's not, yeah, that's, that's just awesome to see, like just the diverse, diversity in uh, routing as well. Whereas in any percent, um, a much more explored category, it's very standardized and uh, in ARB, uh, we have very much top level runners still using different routes. It's very awesome to see. Yeah, always a treat being able to see any routing differences wherever we can. <laughs> it was always a fun time back in, uh, I think it was any percent summer open, uh, seeing like a 6A versus 6B uh, match. It was always kind of funny to watch. N just not being certain who's actually ahead. We've got a much more 50-50 split in uh, that level. Although it definitely biases towards uh, higher level players sticking to 6B, um, but we've seen it at pretty much all levels actually. There were some an hour plus runners using 6B yesterday, props to them. Yeah. yeah. 6B is definitely one of those things which I believe like, I mean, obviously uh, do what you find fun XD, but uh, it's, I think 6B, if you are trying to push for higher tier times, it's, it's much better to start early uh, since you'll be switching to it anyway. So just doing 6B really gives you such a head start. Um, yeah, it's so important to get the reps on that level for sure. Yeah. And it's, I mean, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how much you like level, it's present in pretty much every category in the game at this point. Wibs getting paused second block list, very nice. That was that really Nicely fast done. too, only a couple pauses. Yeah. Did they pause both the uh both the ultra and the and the jump or just just one of them? Not sure. I just saw the the end of it. Gotcha. Meanwhile, Savadro and Tom Felix both entering unraveling here very shortly. Only about 15 or so seconds apart from each other on IGT, so we're having a bit yeah, of a close, close race together. here in the bottom. Tim Felix kind of bouncing Uncle around the secret cutscene there. Uh, Ponko not having a good time. Yeah, Ponko has unfortunately been running into a few pitfalls here and getting some resets in, but better to end a run when it's dead than to keep carrying it out at this point when you really do need to be hoping for progress, because Ponko does need to squeeze out another minute and 15 or so at this point to be making it into the top 16 for bracket. And that time is likely to just go down today. And we've got a couple uh, runners with 51 PBs joining and Temp Felix actually with a mid 52. If he can match that pace, he's currently set to be joining the top 16 as well. What runners are y'all rooting for in chat? You got any favorites going on here? Benny, anyone who says to you, I hate that guy. Wow. <laughs> well, you can't ban me if I'm saying it out loud. Oh, you can't. Like typing it, right? I can't ban Reed either. I'm not a mod. So I'm <laughs> I am a Tio fan till the day I die. Thanks, Talia. I'll start a run right now, just for you. Let's go! Runs in the commentary booth. You can see me in the top right. Must be something wrong with the overlay, but I'm sure that's you, Jax. Yes. Yeah, regardless of, of uh, whether some of these players make bracket stage, it's, it must be very satisfying to be getting all these PBs. Like, uh, we're seeing so much progress being made uh, right in front of our eyes. It's really awesome to see. Uh, I was just checking um, 
Pongle's PB, and they had an original PB of, uh, of, um, 54.29. That's been pushed down to 53.53 now, which is, uh, really cool to see. Alrighty, got a new set of players here. Goof Goose, Nova, Salt, and Cernu. Um, three of these players here, sort of in the in the cusp of bracket eligibility. Um, I could definitely see the time going as low as a 51 today. So I know Nova's looking to improve their time significantly, and uh, Salt definitely looking to get a lower time here just to be a little bit more comfortable about that uh, seating position. Yeah, 17th is not the most comfortable spot for me trying trying to make it into bracket here. So <laughs> improving his time could be very important here over the next few hours. In two hours, Isaac will reveal to us that he was actually playing the long con all along and is available in finals weekend. Oh no. Very nicely done, TO section so far. Uh, TO, Theo section so far. <laughs> uh, by Salt. <laughs> I wish I could carry Tio in a crystal. Uh, yeah, me too. And a very smoothly up. Oh, very smoothly done by Salt. That still is an awesome rescue. Yes, yeah, just shout outs to just rescue as a checkpoint. <laughs> One of the coolest checkpoints to watch when yeah. it can be done well, but at the same time, it is certainly home to some of the most devastating failures, especially eyeball room. If mistakes happen in eyeball room when you're going for a fast cycle and you're just having to fight the waves and struggling to get through it, it's it's, it's almost embarrassing at that point. It feels really bad trying to recover from yeah. that, I can say from personal experience. Did anyone in chat confirm for me if Salt had 31 berries in Mirror Temple? I'm feeling like I saw a 30 there. Uh-oh. <laughs> no shot. Someone check the VOD. How many berries are you supposed to have by the end of the Mirror Temple? Anyone know? 123, many... but you don't really get to see that for a while because we're not oh, going to be collecting any in Reflection. In the meantime, Sir Newt's uh, temple exit yesterday was a 3130. Um, so definitely, you know, depending upon how this rescue goes, could be well ahead of that pace. Um, oh, yeah. Like, substantially so. Salt had 31, I'm hearing in chat. Alrighty. You believe Goof Goose? was just about exactly on the same pace as a previous event PB here, entering Reflection. So this could go both ways for Goof Goose, but potentially could improve his time even further, which again, like you mentioned earlier, could be vital to actually making it into the top 16 coming up. Yeah, my hunch for today is that, you know, the low 51 times are probably safe. But if you've got a high 51, um, you definitely may be looking to improve that. But who knows? We'll see. We are now over 30 minutes into the session, but still over two hours left to go. And then players, of course, can finish out their final runs. Checking back in with Newt. It looks like he'll be finishing about uh, a minute ahead of yesterday's run. That's a good pace to be seeing this early on in the day. Oh, oh. Salt running Pickle. into a little bit of trouble, as well as Newt at the end of the eyeball room getting a little bouncy, <laughs> and Salt having some trouble with the bumpers and start here. But Newt Newt's getting six. through with a 30-24 exit there. And Salt yeah, finding his footing start again. Start just doing 6B start things for Salt, but uh, yeah. I'm enjoying watching the strat selection for Salt. Uh, He's going for some of the, some incredibly difficult strats in my eyes. Yeah, I'm uh, wondering what's going to be going on for falling section here. This is one of the most interesting parts to watch, in my opinion. Getting the three diags in, you love to see it.
what is salt pb in this the uh just from the little that i've watched this the he seems to be using like per, like 48 47 strats well his overall rpb is a 51 42 actually wow yes. yeah yeah i'll be expecting uh a lot of improvement to uh, soon i think uh, i think his game play has been looking very clean Salt is a very well-rounded player. Um, yeah, he plays quite a bit of bingo, and then in our second Celeste Time Trials event, uh, which is a similar format but using um, individual levels, he actually placed eighth with with an eighteen fifty four sum, uh, only about a minute off of the top times there, even from players like Tio. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, looking very comfortable in this 6B for sure. Hopefully this can pay off into the rest of the end game of the of the run here. Oh, having a bit of trouble in early bits of a rock bottom here, right before Feather Skip. Will we get a Feather Skip, though? Ooh, Not quite. Actually might have the gone for it. There. Yeah, might have gone for it, but accidentally went for the uh, last crystal. Oh, and does the early up dash from the uh, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I mean, Salt's going for some, like, really, really nice looking strats. Yeah, that one, that early up dash saves about a quarter second, but only, you only get two and maybe three frames to go for it. So that one can be yeah. pretty impressive to see coming it's, out. It's very finicky. The double diag, though, which he unfortunately messed up at the start as well, can be very finicky. Fortunately, with the, the diag demos, it's not as finicky as before, but it's still, uh, can be very tricky to... Below. We're seeing some of the routing differences come into play here as well now. If we look at the bottom right, we got Sir Newt and Hollows. So in the 6A section, as opposed to running 6B, like we have Salt and Goof Goose doing on the left. Yeah, so you're making this Hollows look very nice. Yeah, very clean so far. I wonder if uh, they've already picked up the 2A hearts, or are they going to do that right before core? Um, it's equivalent for in-game time, although it does allow you to restart chapter, which is slightly faster menuing. Um, I know when I was running ARB and, you know, waffling between 6A and 6B, I would I would usually put uh, the 2A heart with 6A, like you mentioned, just so that my splits are consistent with other runners. Um, yeah. But, you know, if you're just running for yourself, there's not too much reason to do that. Couple times oh. on its intended dev route, but getting through Ooh. on the third try. Salt unfortunately missing Euro cycle on the last 6P, but recovering it very well. It's gonna be a 34 22 exit for Salt. Okay, so Salt about uh, 15 seconds ahead of his run from yesterday. Oh, that's, uh, that's a good look. Here we are back to some temple gaming with Error 404, Bullet Dancer, Julie, and Simplex. The latter two here being runners who have just started with today, so probably looking to finish out these first runs to get a time on the board and see how they stack up. That being said, Simplex has definitely um, restarted at least once here, it looks like, with a file time of 29 minutes. They have not been on this run for the whole session. We got error 404. Working their way through search at the moment. Having a bit of trouble with the seeker and the uh, bottom berry here. That one can definitely be troublesome with it pointed straight at you from the berry. A little bit of an awkward position to get past it at times. Yeah, that berry can be really tough. Even getting out of that room is kind of awkward with how the pillars are placed. I definitely had my share of troubles there. 
Oh, an error for a foregoing to a bubble ultra corner jump into the, the lower bubble there. Haven't seen that strat in quite a while. Almost finishing up with search here, though. Well, we have Bullet Dancer in the top left, getting through Cliff Face. Got the long room coming up here. Not going for the ultra change, just taking it nice and easy. Oh, getting a snowball bop on the top at the end there. That was pretty impressive. Barely squeezing by with his life. Bullet Dancer getting safely through the snowball rooms, so no more immediate deadly volleys coming for Bullet Dancer, but got a little bit of cliff face left to go still. And Julie's therefore, successfully bouncing off the side of that. Julie successfully bouncing off the side of that seeker is a nice optimization at the end of search. And Bullet Dancer losing some time to yesterday's run, but still staying a little bit ahead here out of Ridge. Nicely done. Nice little Theo Vader to uh, recover the, uh, the 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 berry room and rescue there from Julie. It'd be a very finicky seeker to bop if uh, its trajectory isn't what uh, you expect it to be. Air four or four and having a bit of trouble in that double seeker room, but. Getting out with the momentum from Theo there. So many of these uh, rooms in the last checkpoint of 5A can be really difficult and punishing. Julie heading into the idol room, about to exit Temple. Having to fight off the waves here. Oh, accidentally throwing Theo backwards in that moment. Not not being the most cooperative here, but manages to make it through. Error 404 having similar troubles with the, the eyeball waves. Oh, and throws Theo to a spot right before the eyeball. Always a little frustrating. Yeah, that room, very janky overall. I don't blame anyone for having trouble with it. Julie entering reflection with the 36.23 here. What is Julie's PB at for all red berries? I like see a 107 on the seven. splits. Yeah, hour 7.52. So I think this is uh, turning out to be a pretty decent pace so far. Not the best you'd hope for, but not the worst either. Minus a minute and a half here with a couple golds. Seems good to me. As someone who plays bingo quite a bit, it's always interesting to me to see um, like the difference in, in players RTA. So here we see like Error and Julie Presumably having both started just one run this session, um, about three minutes difference on their IGT here, uh, their in-game timer. Yeah, there is always the question of uh, the 60 versus 61 potential frames per second difference. One of those weird little nuances for the Celeste application where people who have like a higher refresh rate monitor can play on 61 but others might be on 60. So you can have some notable RTA differences coming from that.
Could also just be pauses and breaks between chapters to relax your hands for a moment. For sure. I don't think I've heard this remix before. This one's very pleasant. Oh, that's a very cool remix. Yeah, hearing some of the like voice lines. <laughs> yeah, the sample. Yeah, nice sam I love really like the sampling. Simplex now heading out of five A soon, hopefully. Uh, it's gonna be a 35 40-ish exit for simplex we don't have any uh splits to compare against but it just seems to be a pretty decent pace yeah low 36 there you got fooled yeah i'd say this is probably sub 55 -able. uh depends on how their end game looks Happy to be seeing some 6A rep here in uh, Strawberry Jam. Yeah, we didn't get to see much of it yesterday. Glad we're getting there. See a little gameplay there today. Yeah. Always a really fun level to watch. It's just, uh, unfortunately, just not the most optimal uh, routes for this category. But uh, those who prefer it will play it. And that's what we're seeing right here. Yeah, 6P is undoubtedly a much more punishing chapter, so even though it can save up to 35 to 40 seconds, the fact that the danger is so high can make that totally not worth it for some players. Danger and difficulty, truly. Yeah. Because I think you can argue that uh, the rock bottom section, the pretty major component, hollows and rock bottom sections of a 6A, do tend to be a little bit easier than 6B. Yeah, a little bit. Um, it's always been a pretty hot button topic in the community, uh, 6B versus 6A. And uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just uh, it just comes down to a matter of what what you find fun, or well, it's it's it's, it's kind of a balancing act. Simplex going for bottom round here. Uh, Shoutouts. Yeah, it was discovered, I think, oh, I don't remember exactly when, over the past couple of years here now, but was found that bottom route would be a little bit faster than the top route, so I haven't, I haven't seen as many top route gamers over time lately, since then. Yeah, it's something like four of the six bottom paths are fast. Very silly. Yeah, it's, it's always really funny and awesome to see like just like like challenging old timings like oh uh, like like, oh, like routes which were timed to be faster and everyone just kind of accepts that it's faster but someone someone just goes like well but we're kind of just better at the game now let's 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 try timing these again and to completely different results hungry and thirsty for any routing differences we might ever find yeah, always awesome to see just people approaching the game in different ways. Nice little ultra there. Haven't seen that one in a while. Alrighty, swapping over to Luca and then Tokikumo and Meridon. A couple of runners in the 48 range and then in the 52 range looking to beat their times from yesterday to stay in. Yeah. Is this uh is this the first bit of summit that we're seeing this street? Uh, cause, uh, it is. We're, yeah, that's uh, seven arm. Always a street to watch uh, when it's going well, of course. A uh, very volatile level. Uh, placed just right at the end of the run. Brutal stuff. But uh, Eden seems to be on pretty good pace, I think. Can someone confirm? Mm -hmm. Entering what? summit, it looks like at about a thir high 32. Um, so I think this would be tricky for him to uh, pull out a PB here, but... I 
match. And still a very solid run, and I mean, for the first run of the day, it can honestly just kind of be treated as like a warm up almost. Um, still plenty of time to pull out a uh, faster time, but uh, either way, he's quite secure in uh, making bracket stage, I'd imagine. We do have Luca just, uh, entering at a 32.0x. Yeah. So there is potential for Luca to be improving improving upon his current time here. Nice right. little clip through the dust bunnies there. Yeah. Are you guys seeing Merit on screen right now? I'm trying to figure out what happened to them. I think they maybe went into depths and didn't go back into start soon enough. So it got locked out of half of the berries here. That's what I'm thinking happened. What? I'm that gonna sounds... take a check back. I missed, missed yep, the last Yep, here we game. go. Yeah. Oh, that's so tragic. Oh my god. I think that's only like a 10 second time less actually, because the start of 5A is so quick to get back here. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but definitely a little bit silly. Yeah, that's a, an issue which I've never seen before. That's um, unfortunate, but kind of funny. Huh. Yeah, Meridon, uh, from the looks of Meridon's journal it's having back with Meridon did finish out. 5 arb, but had skipped a whole chunk of like six or so of the berries here in the bottom and just decided to come back for them at the very end. However, that may have happened here. So, yeah, I guess got locked out of the bottom trying to do the RTM route. Wait, I'm, I'm getting word. catching word. Yeah, you go ahead. Uh, that Isaac has a 4507. Can someone confirm this? I, I don't see that. Or submission, a time submission channel yet. Are you Isaac we have is a typing. New world record? We may have a new world record. It, indeed, it has been submitted by Isaac that um, 4507.930 has been submitted to the leaderboards. Um, <laughs> that is incredible. Uh, that we is a new all red oh, That's world insane. Yeah, we're Isaac. pulling it up on the this screen right now. We're gonna see the we're gonna see the splits right oh, here. Oh my goodness, that's absurd. Okay, like... Finishing with a core PB as well. Isaac's core PB before this was like What's a 355, and that's a 350. I'm seeing on screen here. That's gonna be a yeah, minus summit, 20. As you mentioned in summit. chat, he choked summit. That's looking like about 20 seconds lost to his summit PB, um, if not a little more, like 25. What? So that was what? a monster pace going into Summit. Watching it out particularly well in Core though, because I mean, 350 <laughs> when you were behind to finish out world record when that's an ILPB. That is that, that is, is really incredible. Congratulations. That is absurd. Isaac. And I did he reset at all near the beginning? Was this the first one of the day? I don't Definitely think Definitely the first run completed. Yeah, that's the first run completed and the first run of the day. We have a new ARB world record. Uh, you saw it here first. That's incredible. It's like NN not finishing out that summit, but Luca still trucking along here, headed into 2.5k. I wonder what sort of base Maradon is on here. 29 minutes into 6B. A little bit behind yesterday's time, it looks like. Getting a look at some of our players who are nearly finishing their runs here now. We have Salt, who is... Salt and Savadra in particular here are near the uh, bottom of the cutoff for making it into bracket. So keeping an eye on them here. It's going to be a 48 something finish for Savadra going into or Meanwhile, Salt is in the vertical section here at just 49 minutes flat on the in-game timer file time. So this oh, yeah, is this definite be potential to improve, yeah. Oh, we also have Vertal now, popping up on the right side of our screen. About to finish, yep. finishing with a 47. This is going to be a PB for Vertal coming up here in just a moment. This is awesome to see. Uh, and moving up to the stuff. effective seed one. With Isaac not able to play in bracket stage, uh, Vertal will be surpassing both, or just Tio, it looks like, because he's currently in third. Ooh, oh, oh no! No! Getting the classic, <laughs> the classic right of wall passage, kick. Right, right of passage, uh, right of passage. Truly. <laughs> Incredible stuff from Vertal. Nicely done. Uh, we have the third 41 on the board. Well, second. 
uh, third county Isaac. Very nicely done from Vertal. Congratulations and GG's to Vertal for a PB there. Good work to production as well for catching that in time for us. Yeah, nice job. Salt's also coming on, coming up on the end of core. Looks like this is gonna be looks massive, like new, right? Yeah, it looks yeah, like a new PB like coming a, his way. I'm, a minute yeah, left. I was trying to judge his size. He can get a this 50 could be a, still. Yeah, this could be like almost a minute and a half PB that we're coming in for, I believe. Yeah, Salt's PB is a 51.42 and about a minute slower than that so far in the in the event. But looking to shatter both of those times right here. Oh, uh, yeah. Getting the cassette cycle like very nicely. You're not Save and quitting. And a little bit of suspense. <laughs> this is... Come on, does the 50 room. Does the 50 rely on this, him hitting the ultra? I don't think, I don't so. think so. Oh, no. Uh, good he stuff. Does it anyway. He's so clean with it, though. Wow. 50 50, 50 from Salt. Good stuff. I, yeah, not even an hour in. We've got quite a few PBs coming our way. This is awesome to see. Good job. Yeah, with that, I think Salt can definitely feel very comfortable about his position in the bracket now. Um, and any <laughs> that improvements is today massive. will just be Absolutely. improving seating. Yeah. 52 second all Red Berries PB for Salt. Catman getting Barry 175 here, starting to get close to the end of this vertical section. Um, if it's possible for him to get an improvement, it's going to be small. Yeah, Catman pretty close here, finishing vertical at 50.05 with a 51.24 on the board. I think it's possible to get some time save still out of that, but yeah, like you said, tight margin. It seems like Savadra's pace from earlier in the run has unfortunately um, sort of disappeared at this time. But, you know, that's got to be encouraging, getting a good start like that early in the day. you gotta got to take the wins you can and make sure you can get on a similar pace uh, later in the session. You've got a couple more hours here to get on a similar run. Yeah, looks like he's going to be finishing off core either way to uh, just, just get some practice in. You do not want to be rusty on core when you're on pace. Catman also coming up on a finish. It will be fairly close. I don't think you'll be able to make it for a new PB or a new submitted time, but uh, oh. it's, it's going to be very close. Running into a bit of trouble in the cassette room here. I th yeah. I think it can happen, oh, though. This, could po this is possible, actually, yeah. Ooh, well, it's gonna be the ultras do matter here a little bit, I think. I think the ultras actually do matter. Got about it's, it's 19 good. seconds before time when entering the room, and I think it can be done in a little closer to 11 to 12. Nicely, nicely done. done! That's going to be a five-second right. improvement for Catman. Good stuff. Is that a PB as well for Catman? I don't quite recall Catman's RPB overall. I'm trying to look for it here. This small improvement does move him up one position on the board. Now higher than Nova. And that is an actual All Red Berries PB for Catman as well, given we have a 51 53. Oh, you love to see so. it. Good stuff. Five second this... All Red Berries PB on top of five second event improvement. Yeah, congrats, Catman. That it's, it's awesome. Probably going to be looking at pushing that down even further in the next two hours, which is uh, going to be a good time. Yeah, unfortunately for Savadra here, coming into the cassette room at about 52, 57 or so, with a 53.10 on the board. So not quite going to be improving it, but just going to be finishing it out here. Try and be getting a little bit more endgame practice in to hopefully Seems... help next runs be clean. Seeing some more uh, time improvements on the leaderboard, uh, Goof Goose with a one minute improvement. Uh, congrats to them on that finish. That's really awesome to see. I don't know if this oh, nice. is a PB for them, but I'm going to... Goose with a 50-29. Not quite an Ard Berries PB. He has a 15 or 50-18. So oh, only that is close. Uh, 11 seconds off of actual PB, though. That's very good. Yeah, that's a 1 and minute that... and 10 second improvement from his previous submitted time. So that's just great well to up, see. Well up the boards, yeah, for sure. Yeah. A much more comfortable ninth place for Goof Goose there. 
Uh, I was going to mention that Sir Newt has entered the score about 45 seconds ahead of his 5607. Um, and definitely has some time to save here as well. Uh, looking to be playing through this vertical section pretty confidently. Run into a bit of trouble here at the end of oh. this room. Makes it through though, still. A little bit of a bonk there. That was a quick death though. Not too problematic. Just off cycle now. Oh, running out of stamina on the left wall. Still recovers it just fine though. <laughs> getting a little bit shaky, but getting through it. All goes for the lava wall bounce and doesn't quite manage. Second try though. Did, did Seth get manage to get an improvement on their submitted time? Not or, quite, unfortunately. Uh, that's it's unfortunate. Somewhere in the range of 20 to 30 seconds behind. I can't quite tell what the journal says. Yeah, Catman and Sabadra taking a well-needed breather before starting their next run, sure enough. Entering the horizontal section of core. Uh, this looks to be on very good pace to be an improvement if all goes well. Yeah, Newt not quite in the running here to be getting into top 16 with this time, but still looking to be improving upon event PB by around a minute, it's looking. There's an interesting um, grouping a little bit lower down on the leaderboard. We've got seven people with a time of 56 minutes. So sort of a cluster there that oh. uh, you may be looking to push out of. Yeah, it'll be nice to pull pull ahead of the group a little bit either way. We have... We have... We have seven 56s, yeah, it looks like that. Yeah. 23rd, Relmont with the 56.05, and at the lower end, Wibs at 29th with the 56.56. So definitely a bit of a tightly packed group there. Meanwhile, Tio is on a low 47 pace here, looking Ooh, to get his, his seed one what? spot back from Vertal. I've been to Tio kind all along, let it be known. <laughs> Me too, truly. We cannot both be number one TO fan, unfortunately, though. We need a duel. Duel in the commentary booth. <laughs> Hop on the CSGO 1v1 right now, Prof. Oh, right now. Oh no, oh no. Uh, I might have to concede. <laughs> Best of five prologue race. Oh dear. dear I know dear. Isaac would be happy for that one at the very least. But yeah, TO coming into the yeah. cassette room at 4637 on the file timer here. It's his cassette yeah. cycle nice and cleanly with the touch at 43. This is looking good. It's looking awesome. Barely off PB? of potential for PB. His PB is a 4701, so he can't quite catch that here. But he will be holding very, very close to it if he hits this cleanly. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that is, yeah, that's two seconds off PB. And that's going to be Teal back in number one seed. Uh, this is awesome. Incredible work, T.O. My goat. On the left here, we've got Marky, TNT, Epic, and Tanuki Mario. Tanuki Mario uh, was here for yesterday's attempt session, but sat on the file creation screen for 2 hours and 55 minutes, and then started a run right at the very end. Seems to have closed out at 116. I'm looking to get uh, probably an improvement today. <laughs> Hopefully, already playing for more of the session. <laughs> There's a pre-run warm-up nap, you know. Had to had to squeeze in something like that beforehand. Totally understandable. Arguably more important than doing actual warm-up. Coil Reese sleep. method. <laughs> Tried and true, proven by a previous true. Sort of world record. It's true. Serial napper. Serial napper. Are <laughs> you guys talking about Evan's fight? I had to step away for a second. Oral Reef uh, warm up nap was oh, the okay. uh, moment we were referring to. There have been a few a few naps coming in before runs that have worked in his favor. I was watching an Evan's fight stream once. He was in five A start and literally just fell asleep in a bubble. Oh, that is like, so funny. Oh my god. <laughs> that, is, that clip is so funny. It's one of the really <laughs> so much. One of the <laughs> arm players of all time. <laughs> Mark.
Murky coming in to 3,000 meters of summit here. Looking to be entering right around, uh, I think that was the 12.58 I'm seeing on the chapter timer. Looking to have some decent potential for improving on his uh, current leaderboard time here. And I think that his leaderboard time also matches up with his actual RPV. Am I correct on that one? Marky? Yes, was looking for Marky's time here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, Marker, or Marky's time on our records was a 118, an hour 18 and 7 seconds before the event here. So this is looking like there's potential for a decent improvement at the end of the uh, end of the run here for him. And the time to keep out for Marky is uh, a 10242 exit from Summit uh, on their 110. Ah, so core was not quite the uh, happiest place to be. No, it looks like an eight minute core and potentially looking to be on pace to, to exit Summit even faster than that run as well. Um, let's see, Epic here. On their previous run, had a 40-49 temple exit, so about a minute ahead of that currently. So looking to get some big gains for these players. The Antigo Bang having a little bit of a struggle at the Seated Berry here. But completely understandable. They, they make the route a little bit strange, trying to go from right to left here. And not having the uh, alternatives practiced can make it tough for sure, but getting it in the end there after a few attempts. Moving on through 2k here. Oh, didn't stop to collect the berry. Hopefully this doesn't go awry. Playing very safe. Berry stays collected. Happy to see it. Oh, Epic looking back at his mirror temple apparently missed the third berry in start. Gonna have to figure out where that is and go back into the chapter in a moment. An unfortunate flip up. This track goes hard. It really does. Off stream, we're having some uh, mid mid fifties runners closing out better times. Sir Newt with a fifty five twenty four, Cookie with a fifty six thirty six, and Wibs with a fifty five fifteen, all making strides up the leaderboard. That that improvement for Wibs is actually almost a two minute time stain. Yeah, one thing to note yet is that um, the players who started today, Jimmy. Clyde, Raccoon Gal, and Simplex all have yet to finish a run. Same with uh, Julie and Detroit Yee. So potentially looking to get some time soon from them uh, over the next hour. Keeping my eye on Marky at this point because he's looking to be improving upon his summit exit from yesterday by somewhere in the range of 30 seconds here, coming into flag one. Previously had a 1 hour, 2 minutes, 42 seconds, and getting to the top here at 102.15, just about, I think that was. So, a little bit ahead of pace from last time, but core can be pretty volatile. We'll see how it goes for him coming up here. And we're also seeing a flashing 47.45 from Luca moving up, um, I think that's one spot, to take fourth from Gooms. A little bit of shakeups wow. at the top of the leaderboard here. You said 47.45 for Luca just now? Yes. That's only four seconds off of Luca's RPB overall. Another person it's holding done. very close to RPB, just like Tio did with the 47.03. Very impressive. Incredibly competitive at the top of the leaderboard here. Yeah, Vertel and Luca, only two seconds off of each other there, vying for the potential podium spots at the end of the competition here. 
Although we still have roughly two to two and a half hours to go here, depending on when last resets take place. Yeah, Teo sitting firmly at the top of 4703, though, that will be incredibly tough to beat for the rest of the those vying for the top seats. Yeah, it is possible, but that would be a massive improvement from either Vertal, Luca, or Gooms if they were coming for it. I think Gooms technically has a PB that's closest to it with the previous 4722, although I'm not sure how much time he's been able to, to uh, commit to all red berries lately overall. Yeah, would be awesome to see. On screen now, though, we have Raccoon Gal, Bullet Dancer, Wonder, and Mishi. Raccoon Gal getting through the end, nearly, of Summit here, finishing up 2.5k. With, uh, what do we have on the file timer there? Is that a 40... 43? 48? 44? 44, <laughs> 44. okay. And, well... That, Raccoon Gal seems to be in the minority to for to actually um, not do a no reset from from the very beginning. Judging from the IGT, looks like yeah, they're but, aiming high immediately. They're currently keeping pace with PB, which means that they're also keeping pace to enter the top sixteen with this run, pushing that threshold ever lower into the fifty-two range. Yeah, going from no time submitted to uh, below a fifty. Up below 50, uh, 52 is going to be awesome to see. Disappearing on the leaderboard. Forced to be reckoned with. Yeah, our qualifying time requirement at this point is a uh, 52.38 now. To be making it into the top 16 for bracket. And that spot at 52.38 is currently held by Temp Felix. People who are a little bit close off of that are Tokikumo. Savaja and Ponkel, all in the 52 to 53 range. Yeah, I think that's so far a seven second decrease from the start of the day, uh, with Temp Felix adding a time in there, and then Toby Kumo getting pushed out, uh, but it would have been Salt's improvement to keep him in. So very nicely done for him there. Now that mid-50 range is starting to get uh, filled up. We actually have three runners between 50-29 and 50-30. Oh, and, and we're, we're seeing gooms. Gooms! Yeah. Oh my goodness, what a pace. Yeah, not quite going to be pb -able, but holding very close to PB here, this is going to bring him ahead of, um, I believe that was both Vertal and Luca, and bringing him into second place here for the seating, right behind Tio. Yeah, very nicely done. With a 47-27, shoutouts to Leonardo. <laughs> when? Four yeah, very nicely done two. from Gooms. Wait, that's crazy. That's just like Tio. That's quite a bit off of uh, Gooms' core PB. Um, so it's on a, a really good pace in the core, but maybe lost more time than he would like there. Yeah, is that an 11 death 408? Nope, I can't read. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, no, three deaths in core. But Gooms does have a relatively full game, unrealistic uh, core PB, I believe, having the world record at a 340. <laughs> yeah, it would be sick to see, but it would not be an easy feat to pull that off in a full game run. Yeah, not at um, all. As we were talking with M Sushi yesterday, turns out uh, that M Sushi was it was it M Sushi M Sushi or was it you Jax who had a 341 core clear time? Oh, I do. Now ending up okay. <laughs> yeah, that that was just a wild wild little stat to hear that your core clear time from cl clearly a while ago now ends up being a, just a second slower than what is now including all the red berries in core. Yep, it was yeah. a little bit silly. But I was proud of that time when I got it. It was a pretty <laughs> clean run. It was good for its time, uh, I'm sure. Yeah, it's been awesome seeing like uh, that level evolve uh, in recent times. It, it's, I mean, back when you probably got that time, it was obviously a pretty neglected level in terms of IL runs. 
Yeah, I think even going back just a year ago or so, the uh, world record for core arb still is sitting maybe barely at a 3-4x, with plenty of uh, very high-level arb runners still only having just a little bit under sub-4. Maybe it's a year, a year and a half I'm thinking about, but still, it has progressed very rapidly over the past short while. Uh, core clear, or core full clear, rather. Also, I just want to highlight that uh, a few seconds ago, Wonder hit a very, very clean last room of 5A. If you missed that, definitely grab a clip and take a look at it. That was a masterclass on how to do that room fast. Oh yeah, it's always wonderful seeing eyeball room done quickly. Getting a couple of ultra chains, and there's like a final grounded ultra you can do to fight your way through one of the waves and get the eyeball yeah. done. Or, the the or get Theo thrown into the eyeball at the last moment. Yeah, Theo, if you are working at the same strat, that Theo ultra is not easy. Getting a decently clean ice skip from Raccoon Gal. Coming Nicely into done. their later portion of the... Uh, or, well, the, not the later portion. I suppose this is still very early in, in core here. But getting past Ice Skip is always always a bit of a relief. Because when Ice Skip sure. goes wrong, you can end up losing large chunks of time to that one strat having to go through multiple rooms back and forth. Getting trolled in this vertical conveyor room, unfortunately, but we out. Raccoon Gal heading into Baron 172. I'm going for the Core Hyper. Nicely done. And the reverse wave dash. Shout out to Rihanna. Uh 172 is was just an utter nightmare until Ryu just was just like, hey, what if we just reverse wave dashed? And now it's, it's still a nightmare sometimes. It's there's some nuance to it, <laughs> but uh, it's uh it's way, way better than what was done before. Yeah, there have been some recent improvements made to the uh reverse wave dash at the ending that turns it again into a bit of a nightmare, but people will do yeah, anything for time I... save at this point. I'm unfortunately getting trolled by the little psycho room near the end of the section here, but we should be through and Raccoon Gal Looking to put up a very strong time for her very first submission. And on the right side of the screen here, we've got two improvement pace runs, both from Bullet Dancer and Mishi. We're seeing some other improvements come in. Marky with a two and a half minute improvement, finishing out that nice. run with uh, his first 10x. Again, now having PB by almost 10 minutes over the course of the last two days. Ten minutes, wow, congratulations. That's what you would like to see. Yeah, Mishy oh. looking oh, having a little trouble on flag three, but still looking to be capable of finishing summit here at around a fifty-five, probably mid to high fifty-five by now pace. And if a mid fifty mid to high fifty-five is coming out here, then that leaves about seven minutes of leeway six to seven minutes to finish core and try and improve her time. Yeah, her 102 actually had a um, 506 core, so definitely some decent skills there as well. Looking like probably not sub -hourable for her, but very much on pace to uh, close out a significant improvement. Taking a look back to the top left, Raccoon Gal has a RPB of uh, 5115, but is in the horizontal section near the end of core at about 5130 at the moment. So not looking at an overall Ardberry's PB, but still looking to set a pretty solid time for the leaderboard here. Um, might be cutting it a bit close to the top 16 cut though. So it will be important for them to potentially improve upon this run up here. The qualifying time right now, as it stands, is 52.23. 52.23? It's improved 15 seconds since I last checked then. Yeah. 
very rapidly right. going down. Oh yeah. Yep, it looks like Jimmy Clyde right has joined the, the top 16 with a 5105. Nice. Oh, congratulations, Jimmy. Is that a PB for Jimmy as well? Not quite. Jimmy's PB is a 5051, but still holding very close to it. That is and now the qualifying time is 5215 from Raccoon Gal. Uh pushing it down yet another 8 seconds. Yeah, I think your prediction from earlier may be correct, Jax. I think we're going to be seeing that 51-minute barrier come in for the qualifications here. Yeah, it's starting to seem like it. Yeah, Raccoon Gal probably looking to improve on this, sitting right on the brink of qualification right now. But only the first run submitted of the day. We got an hour and a half of resets more to go. Yeah, we do still have four players within a minute of that qualifying time, and then a couple more just off that. Um, definitely important to keep an eye on their attempts throughout the session. All right, checking in with Jimmy, Juan, Echo Chris, and Ninja. Jimmy having that just said that 5105. <laughs> Quan and Quan. I wanted to be him so bad last CTT. He's just better. And evidently, with the is 49.05's currently submitted time, a very strong time heading into bracket stage. But still looking yeah, to improve it. Currently the first seeded American on the board. Or North American, excuse me. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's <laughs> a, a cool statistic. Yeah, we do have a decent chunk of Canadian players here as well. including the few with uh, no country listing that we have uh, essentially considered to be members of the Celeste Mountain gang, like Ninja here. <laughs> Residents of Celeste Mountain. Oh, unfortunate oh, oh. for Ninja. Yeah, I don't think you can save that. It's very unfortunate. Yeah, from that point, it wasn't didn't quite seem to be savable. Like maybe there was a chance of squeezing into the dash crystal just above the lava at the end there, but yeah, dangerous moments there. It was Shout just unfortunate to, to be Ooh. such a long room. Pawn missing under trail there, unfortunate mistake. Shouldn't waste them too much time though. And it looks like with this 4905, it's about seven seconds off of his PB. So he's uh, basically pretty much just needing to BB at this point to get an improvement. Um, and of course, with the next fastest time on the board being 4829, uh, it's going to be tough for him to pull ahead of anyone here. But any improvement could help him keep his current seating. Yeah. Even in the 49, 48 range, I think uh, massive improvements can be seen. Especially with uh, the rate of improvement we've been seeing. I mean, evidently from the our world records, I think. I mean, the first 47 was the 47.12, right? What a magical category. First 45 was a 45.34. Yeah. We have a habit of destroying minute barriers. What of it? <laughs> <laughs> a little bump there on the on the feather, but it's gonna recover very nicely here. And it's gonna be heading into the cat set room. Unfortunately, not gonna be an improvement to his submitted time, but uh gonna finish off the run nonetheless. Yeah, it's great for practice, especially these later core rooms. You know, if you haven't played the level too much, these rooms are can be really, really hard. Um This cassette room in particular has three different cycles to keep track of that can uh be a hard wall sometimes. Yeah. Definitely wouldn't hurt some practice, wouldn't hurt too much right now. We're still uh, fairly early on in the round. That being said, the reset window is just about halfway over at this point. Yeah, like five over, minutes. Yeah, an hour and a half left here. 
Oh, Jimmy accidentally retrying instead of returning the map after grabbing the cliffside barrier there in Chasm. It's like a little mistake. That was almost the inverse of what happened to Maradon yesterday in uh, 50, 1500 meters after the wing and barrier. I suppose an accidental retry is much more forgiving than an accidental RTM, though. What is that setup from Jimmy Clyde? Is that a thing like that people do now? That's yeah. that was really cool to see. Yeah, people started doing a bit of a reverse there to try and get some uh, falling speed in just the moments before the block uh, goes away, as opposed to having to just r push against it and wait for it to fall down. Awesome. Yeah, that does save a little bit of time if you can manage the timing properly. Yeah, it seems to set up the horizontal corner boost uh, pretty well as well. When I ran, uh, people were still kind of just doing like the the fat the little fast hole before to uh, hit the little corner jump. Mm -hmm. And we have Quan now on the bottom right doing the newer arb route through start and into depth here. Started off going for the top berries here and the start of Mirror Temple. So we'll be seeing a bit of a backtrack later, hopefully without incident because we have seen a couple moments where people are attempting to enter depths and back out but have gone a little bit too far and cut themselves off from returning. Yeah, that is one of the small pitfalls of this uh, of this new new route if you aren't prepared for it. Looking at paces, it looks like Quan exited Ridge at an 1850, 1840, something like that. Um, so going to compare to yesterday, that is about 20 seconds behind his 4905. Um, but definitely with time to save in uh, each of the following chapters, this could still uh, clutch out as a PV. And we now have a submitted time from every single one of our players. Nice. Congrats to everybody for finishing a run. And then even 50. That's, That's really satisfying. <laughs> oh, we have an even 50 on the leaderboards right now. Oh, yeah, you love to see mm, it. Perfect. And with that, we still have our top 17, the... Uh, People that would be qualifying for bracket at 52-15 uh, with Raccoon Gal at the 17th spot. Maradon and Tim Felix not too far behind at 52-23 and 52-38. As well as Toki Kumo and Savadra at 52-42 and 53-10. So they're all within one minute of poking their way up to the uh, qualifying, qualifying spots here. It's potential for those four players to be pushing in. Uh, Ponkel and Plex are a little bit further out at a uh, high 53 and a low 54, but they might have a chance if they're able to pull out a really good run later on. Yeah, definitely some potential there, but it will be difficult. Yeah, I was going to say, don't get too comfortable yet, because we, I suspect we will see quite a few more shuffles coming up, both in the upper echelons of the leaderboards and lower down. It's going to be exciting to see. April Chris playing through the nightmare of a checkpoint it is uh, rescue is and uh it's been oof. oh no <laughs> unfortunate death to the seeker there yeah yeah I'm convinced death strats for rescue just don't exist <laughs> and yeah, I'm not taking your rooms that certainly feel like that nice little bot there though Getting the last berry. Ninja collecting that berry and crossing with a nice neutral jump. Nicely done. Taking a look at our overall leaderboard, looks like we got Bullet Dancer coming in with a 
10 second PB just about on submitted time. And well as... Tanuki Mario with a three minute improvements from his previous time. Nicely done. That's pretty huge. And I yeah. think those are both, are those both also PBs for these runners? I think so. Yeah, Tanuki Mario, that, Mario that's definitely a new Ard Berries PB and Bullet Dancer had a 111.54 now, is that? Oh yeah. So also a new PB for Bullet Dancer. Well, new set of players here. You got Tokikuo, Vapo, Olivia, and Blaze Quilava. Okay, Kumo and Olivia on the left here, both in that 52 range, um, vying for spots and vying to hold on for spots in Olivia's case. Yeah, this is going to be an exciting little little pocket to watch. Uh, Lewis, we're vying to qualify for bracket stage. Whoa, hold on. Olivia's like 45 seconds ahead. Hey, yo. Oh, yeah, Quite a bit of the run left, green. though. Optimists, things are looking very optimistic for Olivia. Toki Kuma also just pulled off a. Is that a 421 6B? I think I just saw. It is. Yeah, only two clean. deaths there. Very solid. It's clean. Heading into Summit now. Very volatile chapter, but hopefully he can hold on and have a chance at qualifying for bracket stage. Yeah, Tokikumo's 52 had a 34.49 reflection exit. Uh, so we'll see very shortly here what sort of pace he's on. Um, very similar, it seems. So looking to need a better summit than that. 13.23 um, in that submitted run. Uh, definitely definitely room for improvement there. Um, but summit is a grueling chapter in this category. So nothing is for granted here. Starts off strong, though. Yeah. It's definitely really, um, with Tokyo Kilmo on stream here, reminds me, it's, uh, it's, I feel like some something which was very interesting to watch in the past few years was the, just the, how the evolution of, like, the very tiny circle that is, like, the Japanese Celeste so speedrunning circle. It's, like, it's, it's very cool seeing, like, the sort of, like, it's like the torch getting passed down generation to generation. Yeah. With like the different phases of like groups of like groups of like two or three Japanese runners running Celeste. Yeah, early on it was pretty much only Nero uh high level play. Uh, but then sort of phased out and has um, graced us only a couple times in the last couple of years. One of those times being with the advent of pause buffering before pause buffering was really a thing. Just um, absolutely using busting an entire the game second wide open. keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's also graced us with the uh, some oh, the summit strat where we uh, we clip through the bottom of those dust bunnies. There was a task strat, but uh, he found like a human viable way to viable way to do it. I think a yeah. lot of developments have been made since then, but he was the first to sort of attempt it uh, in RTA. Yeah, it's definitely been iterated on since then. But Nero drop when he uh, pulled it out in 2020 was right around the time I started playing, so I'll, that is what I'll always remember Nero for. Because that's the last thing he posted before disappearing entirely from Celeste. We miss Nero. Nero, please come back. <laughs> yeah, and then we had uh, No Celeb and Dekai San and uh, Mambo Mubik, I think. And then now it's uh, now it's uh, Pudding Guri, Toki, Kumo, and Enen. Mm -hmm. The names do shuffle around quite a bit, though I think some of the Japanese runners have gravitated a lot towards a uh, farewell over time. Ah, uh, yeah. That's one thing I've noticed, in particular looking at the farewell boards. We saw a lot, uh, I think farewell was also like pretty dominated by uh, Chinese runners at the time as well. I don't know if that's still the case now, but oh, farewell wait. was very popular, Blaze or no DTS trying. at least. Getting a retry out in the heart room there after messing up one of the early ultras. I'm not sure if that was time save, but unfortunately, either way, wasn't quite able to squeeze in a event improvement here for the 5740. So how de decently close to it. So good job, Blaze, nonetheless. And 
Olivia on pace currently for a mid to low 51, depending on how the score goes. Uh, oh, this is a pretty significant important. run, yeah, for seeding purposes. And yeah, not just seeding purposes, but potentially for staying safe and actually making it to bracket at all. Yeah, for sure. I enjoy Vapo's splits on the right there, being within a second of both Prologue and City. Um, but then it looks like losing a little bit of time in sight. Maintaining a very consistent pace. I would expect nothing less. Yeah, if something if there's something Vapo's known for, it's uh it's his incredible consistency. This 49.15 that Vapo's already gotten in the event is uh, actually just six frames off of um, his category PB. So looking to hopefully improve that today, maybe get a 48 as well. We'll see. Some awkwardness over on the side of Olivia doing very 172 the old fashioned way and making it through. Nice job. There's some <laughs> wasted a dash at the start. You had to ad lib. Okay, Kumo doing that strat that we mentioned, Nero innovating earlier, getting it second try. Nicely done. Well, we're going for a relatively fast cycle here, unfortunately slowing down near that part there and ooh, taking a death, but uh, that was a really clean start. That cycle is very tight and uh, not easy to do, especially under, under the pressure that is uh, the tournament and as well as like being on pace in seven arb yeah summit arb has always been a very a veritable beast it's of a just, chapter it's just so messed up it's so long and it's pretty consistently difficult throughout like i think one of the big differences i feel playing summit arb versus summit clear is summit clear most of the difficulty comes from it just being a long chapter rather than necessarily a actual difficult strats going on but yes some are you're, you're hit with consistent difficulty throughout almost the whole thing yeah are you gonna put like probably one of the longest and hardest ils in the entire game near the end of probably one of the most difficult categories in the game it's just so brutal like yeah no it's 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 just absurd that we're able to get the times that we, we do just withstanding that pressure Blaze Kalaw is starting anew. Hopefully going to be able to improve on his current time of 57.28. Olivia looks like having struggled uh, a fair bit in the vertical section of this core here. Still able to close out a 51, uh, but definitely not the, the low 51 that was possible entering this chapter. Yeah, well... Eyes on Olivia at the moment. But yeah, Almost 20 second improvement here would still be massive. Yeah. And yeah, worth noting that Olivia's PB is a, let's say that is a 5122 RPB. So not quite going to be possible to get a new RPB, but leaderboard PB is very much in the cards. Cleanly played so far by Olivia. Okay, Kumo also making making very good progress through the summit here, having entered it about ten seconds ahead of the fifty-two forty-two. Um, a good chapter time here would be very big for him as well. Looks like we're going to see a fifty-one from Olivia, barring anything disastrous happening here. Very nice. Nicely done. That's going to be a very uh, sizable improvement on her current leaderboard time. That's going to be it's going to be bringing her. Uh, don't think that improved her placements, but that's going to be bringing her further down. Uh, 
Makes it a bit harder for people to catch up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still holding spot 16. Just widen the gap a little bit. Get a little bit more of a comfortable margin there. Staying within the qualifi uh, qualification group for bracket. Yeah. Qualification still sitting currently at 52.15 by Raccoon Gal. Tokikumo hoping to challenge that uh, with uh, his current pace. I'm not too sure if a 30 second ish improvement is from his current leaderboard placement is in the cards, but. Uh, Epo looks like extending his lead as he plays through these uh, four checkpoints, but we're checking in with some new players here. Catman, Luca, Bullet Infi, and Vertle. Ooh, let's see what the space is from Vertle. 345 in Summit right now. Um, quick math. That's like a 3140 entry. 3135. Okay. Vertle probably on about similar pace to his uh, current best submitted run. About 30 seconds ahead of his 48.10, so looking to be getting another 47 here if he can hold. I'm taking a look over at Luca Vicna because this pace is looking pretty solid. And on the IL timer, I think I'm seeing a just about eight minutes here in the early portions of of um, rescue. <laughs> Slipped my tongue for a moment there. Oh, I had running into a bit of a struggle at the end of that room there with the seeker though. Bit of a bit of a misdirect leading to a death, but uh, Lucas been playing incredibly well thus far. One of the few in the running to grab. First seed from Tio. Is Isaac still doing runs, or? Um, I believe he said he was still going to be doing some more. I'm not sure at the exact moment. I'll I'll check in on that. Gotcha. Oh man, making this eyeball lung room look so easy. On the yeah, that was screen. awesome. Really well played by Luca there. Yeah, Isaac is still doing runs. He's in resort at the moment, and just uh, just about six seconds behind on his entry to the level. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, Luca on incredibly solid pace right now. Heading into reflection. And bullet if he was bullet if he one of the players uh, without a submitted time at the start today, or am I mistaken? No, he played yesterday. Gotcha. Looking to improve upon his time right now. Some clean gameplay. I will say one of the more interesting things for me to be watching in the course of this event is how Catman has been doing, given that he's a bit of a dark horse for this event, having only started learning the category about three weeks ago and still coming out with this 5119 current event PV. And looking to be not too far behind on his splits currently either. So there's My chances goodness. to be improving upon that now even. One thing that I will mention for Bullet's pace is uh, that 109 from yesterday uh, had a 2509 ridge exit. So depending on how this cliff face goes, looking to be multiple minutes ahead of that. Oh yeah, definitely looking pretty solid here. You know, that was about, I think, like a 22.10, 22.15 entry into cliff face. So, with a... Okay, I, I should never have spoken. <laughs> I have run into a little bit of trouble at the end of the long berry room there. But if the rest of this goes pretty cleanly, this could still be in the range of a low 24, possibly even high 23 for bullet NP. For the exit of ridge here.
And it looks like Luca's 6B entry was somewhere right around, let's see, 27, 17 or so, I believe, if I'm catching the timer correctly there. So not the best that Luca would hope for, but if the rest of this run can go pretty well, I think there's still chance to improve upon his current time, just not by too large of a margin. Meanwhile, we have Vertel getting to the end of 2,500 meters here in the final room. Some awkwardness in the movement there, but Vertel's able to recover. There was some potential for a death there, so it was very nicely recovered. And the ending is clean from Vertel. And getting a uh, level timer entry into 3k at about 844-ish right there. So with a really clean 3k, I think Vertel is capable of getting right in the range of, I think that's 11, 11.2x almost for this summit. Catman was having a bit of trouble on 1500 meters here. So not fully up to pace, but still holding pretty decently here. Oh, Luca getting a little bit of trouble in this rock bottom first room as well. Got a death in the later portions of the room and then struggling to get through to battle in here at the start. Yeah, not, not having the best time. That Luca would have pulled for, but uh, hopefully going to be able to pull it back. It's looking tough though. We see Bullet Envy has returned to the menu. I'm not sure if that was a full reset we just saw, or if that was a return for... Okay, no, not quite a full reset. Good to know. Just did a save and quit to stop for a second. Get his bearings again. And Verto we have getting through the later portions of 3k here. Just about halfway through, I believe, actually, in updraft right now. Oh, and we get a look Toki now Kuma. on the right side. Yeah, to Toki Kumo as well, coming up to the end of his run. Nearly Ooh. to the vertical section's finish. This is definitely looking like potential for a PB. Uh, yeah, this is looking like PB potential. Not sure if he's going to be able to challenge the qualifying spot with this pace, but PB... Oof, very unfortunate death there. He'd be definitely still possible, I think. A reminder that the time to get into the uh, qualifying portion of the group, the top 17 right now, is 5215.8 is the time to beat. I have in Toki Kumo coming up on the last room of the vertical section here. This is looking to be comfortably ahead of that uh, pace. Oh my, yeah. Just has to finish that one out, though. We'll see how it goes. Gets the fast bumper hit where you just glide over that platform up ahead. So that was a solid nice. second of time save. It's always nice getting the feeling for that one. Lands the demo hyper as well. Uh, Toki Kumo's current PB is a 51-54. Oh, then this might be viable for an actual RPB overall as well then. Meanwhile, we've got Vertel finishing Summit at 43.10, also on quite a heater of a pace here. Oh, get yeah, a low wow. 47. Low 47 would be, would be incredible for Vertel, at least in terms of PB improvement, considering he had started this event with, I think, only somewhere in a low 48. So that would be a full minute of ARB improvement just in, over the course of the event then. Yep, Vertel's PB currently is a 48.10. Improved uh, it by... 20 seconds in this event. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Jax. Yeah, I was going to say, Luca entering Summit at 31.50, that's about on pace with his 48 from yesterday. Uh, so probably a little bit behind that 47.45 we see here, but a pop-off in Summit uh, could still mean another slight improvement. And we just and got we Toki, Toki Kumo. Kumo. Yeah, go Finishing ahead. up at 51.28 there. 
for that's gonna... a minute and 14 seconds, I believe, improvement on leaderboard PB, and then that's also an actual all red berries PB. Yep, Tokikuma. that's almost a 30 second PB for Toki Kumo. Gonna be his first for the event, and it's gonna push him well into the qualifying group at the moment. It also pushes our qualifying time down to 51.44. So Olivia now on the threshold. Yeah, that 20 extra 20 seconds that didn't move her up a spot, probably gonna be <laughs> having a chance to save them, making making their way into the actual bracket. One thing I will mention about Olivia's run is that she had a 6.42 reflection split. Uh, so probably not particularly happy with that. 642 reflection. Uh oh. Yeah. In that 5144. <laughs> Bit of a pitfall. So hopefully, hopefully she'll be able to improve upon that pace next time around. Although we are having fewer and fewer next times coming up, given that we now have an hour and nine minutes remaining in the reset period for this event. And just to give a quick reminder for those watching. Runners are allowed to reset all the way up until the end of that timer, and if they have started their final run by that point, they can finish it out as long as it may take them, even if that's after the end of the stream. We'll still have the runs being refereed and submitted. All eyes on Vertal here as he makes his way through the core. We played so far. Side. Very nice execution of that left side strat. Yeah, a reminder that he was roughly 30 seconds ahead of his uh, both event PB and RPB pace, given that his event PB is his new Allred Berries PB when he entered the core. And I think he was still holding decently close to that pace going through the rest of the chapter here. Uh oh. Runner down. That's a pitfall. pretty late death. Um, yeah, that's a, that's gonna be a solid eight seconds or so, considering getting knocked off cycle as well. Is this still fine? Or oh no, not again, Virtal. This is not what you want to see, unfortunately. But Virtal's gonna push on that Very wave dash and room. that wave dash into the little ice ball bob can be really tight. Nice little wall bounce in the lava though. I still think there's a chance that this can improve upon Virtle's current time, but unfortunately not as much as we had hoped for watching him come into core here. Yeah, and definitely not able to beat out Gooms' 47-27 here. Yeah, this is definitely yeah. going to be close now, coming into the later portion of core here for Virtle. That being said, of course, with only a two, a one and a half second gap between him and Luca, any improvement is uh, good to take here. Oh yeah, that could be a seating bump if he's managing to get that second and a half improvement. He's currently above Luca, um, but just you know, extending that gap a little bit um, may help him stay ahead. Going to be entering cassette room here at forty-seven fifteen. Going for the Ultra Strat, getting it first oh try, swinging all the way ahead. through to the cassette there. This? Got the save and quit for that last little chunk of time save before entering the final room here. And we got a 47.26 going into the Ultra's room here. This could be coming out 47.3x. Capable. Come on, Brittle, hit these Ultras. And the chain comes in. 47.38. Five second improvement. And the curse, of course, strikes TV again, though. Well. The classic core late game, unfortunately, <laughs> chipping away 20 or so seconds from Vertle earlier with a 425 chapter time. But still, very solid to have gotten another PB in the event here. So GG's to Vertle for that. Is that his second or his third PB? Uh, at least second. Might be third. I don't recall exactly. That's to be third, right? Because... The current PB on the sheet is 48.10, and before he already had a 47. So I think he's PB twice today, you know? 
I think the first PB was that yesterday. Wait, did the 4743 come earlier in the stream and just now for the 4738? I don't remember now. The time the time is uh, blended right, together so for me a little. 4829 was his PB coming in. So yeah, he's PB'd three times in the last two days. Wow. Incredible. Yeah, almost 50 full seconds of PB while playing in the 4847 range in just two days of runs here is very, very... Very good to see. Huge jumps for Virtal. So Newt entering Summit about a minute ahead of his uh, 56 from yesterday. So potentially still looking to get some time save over this 55 uh, that he's gotten today already. And error also making strides here, uh, minutes ahead of their mid game pace, looking to potentially push into a 10x. Uh, that would be pretty big for them. Oh yeah, we have a uh, error 404. What is that? That was about a low 26 entry into the mirror temple here. Then mm -hmm. definitely have an improvement going on there. Hopefully that pace can hold through the rest of the. Uh, Rest of the run here, though, this is only about halfway in, so a lot more challenges to come. Certainly. Some awkwardness on the wing buried there for Sir Newt, but it was going to be able to pull through. Um, I'm not sure exactly how how this pace is for Sir Newt, but he seems to be barely through Summit right now. Yeah, enter the. Same with Temp Felix. I think Sir Newt entered the summit just about at a um, a high thirty six, I believe that is. And if we're looking at Sir Newt's previous paces here, let me see. Yeah, so entering at a high thirty six would be about forty to fifty seconds ahead of. Uh, Srinut's previous paces. That's, yeah, no, that's solid. Keep your eyes on Srinut. Marky making his way through 4 arc right now. Um, 4, uh, 4A always, you know, 4 arc always just is just an incredibly punishing and challenging chapter as with the two chapters before it and after it yeah the mid game there definitely gonna be a really it's harsh brutal, harsh bit of yeah. gameplay for sure well i don't think arb really lets up almost at any moment for you truly oh marky accidentally jumping at the very end there but not quite landing on the jump through ends up face first into some spikes but gets through there on the second try All right, swapping over to a new view of players here. We have Catman in the last few rooms of Core on the right here on the big screen for y'all. Let's see how the end of this run is playing out for Catman. Just to give a quick check on his pace, he's at 50-50 on his file timer with a 51-19 for event PB. So I think he's in the running to save a couple seconds here, possibly? Gotten it really close, yeah. though, getting out of this cassette room. Yeah, this will be very close, I think. But yeah. The ultras will matter. The splits show 1.8 seconds ahead into the horizontal section here. Currently 51.19. Ooh, missing. Oh. Wait. A slight no. Almost. That'll do it. going to be missing out on event PB by a s just less than a second. Or a bit over a second. Unfortunate for Catman. Just a slight yeah. stumble at the very end. Yeah, it's still an, still an incredibly solid time, and 
another hour for him to improve, but that was incredibly close. Yeah, JJ's all the same for having another great run. I believe his event PB is his current PB, right? I believe so. Again, Catman having only had three yeah. or so weeks of practice beforehand, getting ready for the Allred Berries open stage here is really fast improvement. So, very I cool believe to see production. That quickly. I believe production is giving us something of a themed group of players here. Perhaps a reprise from yesterday. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> so it may seem. Yesterday we were <laughs> visited by Bullet Bill, Bullet Dancer, Bullet Enfy, and TNT Go Bang. This time around we have Blaze joining the running, replacing <laughs> uh, Bullet Bill. Adding a nice fiery aspect to this crowd. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a pretty competitive group of players too, between all the Bullets and TNT. Ooh, yeah, definitely seem to be top. in a pretty close range, actually, given that T yeah. uh, TNT is on the high end with a 112.06 and Bullet Enfy is only at 109.31, so they're all within two and a half minutes of each other here. Taking a look at Blaze's splits, oh. seeing a sizable amount of green going on there for Blaze. So the beginning of this run has played out really well. Yeah, and with that we've we've hit the last hour of uh, resets, 58 minutes remaining on the timer for resets in the second day of Strawberry Showdown. I was going to mention that Bullet is about a minute ahead into this reflection entry compared to their 109.31 on the boards. Potentially looking to extend the lead over the other Bullets. What just happened on TNT screen? Look like he actually oh. made a new desktop or something. Look like the screen's like swiped to the side. Oh. I just, oh, it looks like some oh some, some OBS issues. Yeah, resetting the All run good. there. So yeah, <laughs> the occasional technical issues. Not too, not too big of a surprise when you know OBS is a a finicky program at times. That little corner kick there from Blaze. God, I got, got it on the second try. That corner kick's always really iffy. You risk dying to spikes as Blaze did the first time for that strat. No improvements from Meridon, Temp Felix, Vador, Raccoon, Gal in the last hour or so. They're all still sitting with the times they had um, outside that cutoff range. Uh, I wonder if any of them have had decent paces in the time sets. Seven chat saying, through another PB in Heart of the Mountain. Right near the end of the run there. Unfortunately, missing Depth's corner boost, but Blaze is fairly clean through Temple right now with the uh, IC. I can't exactly make out the numbers, but the splits look very green for Blaze right now. I yeah, definitely have a pretty solid gap from uh, previous runs for Blaze. We've got Luca in the bottom right now. I 
Is this on pace to be a lower 47? Uh, I think it's it not it close. close. I'm, I don't it's think... It's definitely close, but it's, it's not looking too good, I think. If the rest of this goes clean, I think there could be a few seconds of improvement, oh. at least for Luca. Okay, I take it back. I think we may be out of the range by now. Yeah, it's good. Considering... Unfortunate, but uh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Oh no, yeah, no, that's just a little bit too much. And yeah, not the core Luca would have wanted here, but uh, look, looking to close out the run probably for some core practice. Yeah, dang, entering at a looks like a forty-three fifteen too. So had some had some leeway and just wasn't able to execute uh, at the end here. Yeah, core definitely a deceptively difficult section of the run, especially sitting right near at the end. Bullet, again, maintaining that minute ahead pace out of reflection, heading into summit here. And with the summit in that 109 being in 1848, um, they may also be looking to save some additional time here and uh, close out a massive BB. Definitely hopeful for some summit improvement. Really long, Luke. arduous Luke. chapter, I've, as I've mentioned before. Oh yeah, and we do have Luca coming into the very last couple rooms here. Going for the ultra cane skip. Doesn't quite get the full cycle, but still pretty quick to the cassette. And recovers that nicely. Yeah, it seems like a, definitely seems like a very finicky strat. Uh, trying to get the last bit of time safe. Yeah, unfortunately, not going to be able to improve on his current time, but uh, it's still a solid run nonetheless, and 52 minutes left to bang out another likely awesome run from Luca. And with that, I'm probably going to be heading out for today. I hope everyone enjoys the last two hours of the open stage Strawberry Showdown. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us today, Juan. Great to have well, you. Thank you. Substitution was, uh, we were happy to have you. So thank you for jumping <laughs> yeah, in. Much yeah, appreciated. Thanks so much. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the events. Uh, I'll be keeping an eye as bracket stage begins. All right. Have a good one. Yeah. See ya. All right. Luca jumping back into core to get a bit more practice in here. Completely understandable after, uh, the issues that came up. But taking a look at the other runners and how they are progressing now. Taking a look at Bullet Dancer's splits. He appears to be a little bit ahead of, at the moment. I think I'm seeing... Is that a minus seven on the splits there? Yes. Yeah, and Blaze about 40 seconds ahead. Yeah, so both of them holding some solid paces for the moment. Blaze getting about halfway through the run here. Bolt ends are a little bit earlier, so at the start of Ridge. Bulletin, if you're looking to have a pretty solid start to a Summit ARP here as well, looking at the level time so far, about 2.30 at the moment, getting through 500 meters here near the end. And what did you say it was in 1848 for Bulletin Fee's previous summit arc? Yes. Yeah, so I think yeah. this is on pace to be improving at least a little for now. I've always loved watching Thousand Meters Orb. Oh, and speaking of, we now have Isaac up on screen with a thousand meters arb at this very moment. Not quite on the best pace of his life, given he's plus, uh, can't quite tell what that says, 15 seconds or so out of reflection. And having some immediate trouble in 1500 meters, unfortunately, with getting the backup cycle for this berry. Manages it after a few tries, but with the uh, margins that Isaac has to go for, considering he has a new Allred Berries world record during this event, <laughs> it, it would be pretty tight trying to 
get any more time save out of that. We see Jimmy collecting the 2A heart, but don't let that fool you into thinking he's in early game, because he was doing that just after completing 6A gear. So, like I mentioned earlier, some runners will choose to uh, do it that way just to keep paces consistent, um, since essentially by not doing 6B, um, you need an extra heart somewhere, and so usually it's uh, putting it right next to 6A is nice for comparison's sake. Um, but yeah, entering Summit here uh, at a high 33. So I think with like, that's like what? 17 minutes to still get a 50. So I think he could potentially pull out a PB here. Um, I know late game is not his strongest suit uh, with 13 minutes, 7, 7A being, I think, uh, pretty typical for him, but we'll see if he can pull out an improvement here. It would take somewhere around a 1230 summit and a 430 core, roughly, in that range, I think it is. So that's doable, but it might be a little bit tight. We'll see how it plays out for Jimmy. And we've got a couple of other players on screen. Satellite Sam and Simplex, who uh, only played in today's session, already getting uh, nice mid to low 10x times. Uh, but potentially looking out to close an improvement here for Simplex. Oh, and Sam, an entire minute ahead. This is potentially sub-hour pace. Oh yeah, looking very good for Sam there. At the start of 6B. Kind of with a new view here, though. We have Gooms on the right, finishing up core. Or not, but just starting core, rather. But looking to be on a solid pace. Oh my goodness. What do we have going on here? Minus 20 out of Summit. And that's so this is potential for 46, isn't it? Oh, wait, hold on. I think actual PB has a 352 core finish, so that could be difficult to hold the pace of. Yeah, I'm seeing best possible time, 4701. You'd have to basically match his ILPB, which again is extremely unreasonable. <laughs> But an excellent pace nonetheless, and uh, could potentially be putting him in uh, one more seat position up here above Tio if he can close this out. Oh my goodness, missing the corner kick, but getting under with that hyper. Yeah, I think that hyper is actually. That's another intended way of going for the strat there, um, because it can okay. save you another half second if you get enough coyote and manage to land right on the final platform, but didn't quite manage that. And then had a little bit of trouble going into Barry 172 just afterwards, so not an ideal core. So not looking like this is going to be an actual RPB, but still has some room to be improving his time in the event here. Uh, with this RPB is 47.22, isn't that still possible? Oh wait, my mistake. Yeah, I, I must have been thinking of the wrong time. I was thinking of best possible time. So never mind. Definitely still possible to PV then. Gonna be cutting it a little bit close, but Gooms is one of the best core players around. Movement is mesmerizing. I mean, when you have both the core clear world record and the core full clear world record, there's definitely a lot of strats you might be doing that others might not. And having them really well optimized at the time, same time here. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> the strats here are very impressive. In all, 175. Entering horizontal at a 45.59. What's this section, like 105 at top level play? Uh, I think somewhere in a minute flat to 105. I can't recall exactly, but that sounds about right. So this is technically maybe potential to finish out with a 46 still, given that his gold on splits is a 352 and his ILPB is a 340. That upright demo 
makes that work nicely without uh, getting the full speed from the ultra. On Gims. Will we see the cane skip ultra coming in here? Oh no! Doesn't quite land it. Manages to run into one of the ice balls halfway through the room there. Opting for a slightly easier strat in the final room instead here. Has to slow down a little bit to avoid a fireball. And is not going to be squeezing in with that 46 or lowish 47. We'll be instead seeing, I think, a 47-11-ish, most likely. But that's still going to be an RPB for Gooms coming up here. Yeah, we should be seeing about a 10 second PB here. And uh, slightly furthering his lead on Vrodel and Luca. 47-12. Throwback to the old, long-standing Allred Barriers world record from Bubai. GG Gooms. Or 47-13, my mistake. Caught that off by one second. That's still a 402 core. That just shows, goes to show <laughs> how good Gooms is at core. Even with a massive mistake like that at the end and some troubles earlier on, he gets a 402. That's crazy. 402 IL time with four deaths in core. That's just incredible. And this one had a 614 reflection? Excuse me? <laughs> wow. Wait, wait, wait. What? You can almost save a minute on that, Gooms. What kind of early game pace was this? <laughs> I mean, neither the Ridge nor the Resort were like A plus stellar. They were pretty solid. The Resort in particular, again, pretty solid. It doesn't seem like any standout amazing splits were there for Gooms, except. Well, yeah, no, none of them were standout amazing. They were all just very, very solid all the way through, in my opinion, there. Very excited to see if he can get a 46 either today or uh, potentially later in bracket stage. As we switch to some of the people on the cusp of um, making it to that bracket stage, Savadra with a 53.10, Meridon 52.23. Both of those two will need some improvement here uh, to make it into the top 17 positions. Um, and again, if you missed it, that is because Isaac will not be able to play in that bracket stage due to being out of town for the full finals weekend. And a reminder as well on the uh, qualifying time that you may see on the leaderboard is 51.44 or better, currently held by Olivia at 17th place. So for the runners that we have up on screen at the moment, that's definitely within the cards for Maradon here. And something that Jimmy Clyde is going to have to uh, potentially watch out for, but most likely in a safe spot, given we only have uh, about another hour and a half that people may be doing runs for. Tio entering even faster than Gooms here. This is legitimately 46-able now. A milestone he's been pushing for for quite some time, I know. Yeah, this is looking like a very solid pace from Tio. Definitely rooting for him here. I think there is that small chance of the 46. Going for the demo hyper, looking like it was almost the last frame he had to go for it there. And getting the cassette relatively cleanly here. This is going to be really tight. This has to be a very clean final room in order to actually pull off a 46, but I think it's just barely possible. Come on, Tio. Gotta get this full ultra chain. What are we getting here? 46.59! Oh. Congratulations, Tio. Cut it a little close, but he got the 359 core to clutch it out. A two second Allred Berries PB in his first 46, barely scraping by that minute barrier. GG's Tio. Very well done.
I'm honestly so happy already with how the summer of Arv has been going, just seeing all of these runners get so many PBs and improving the category over time here. Very happy how things have come so far in such a short period of time here. Yeah, we must have had like almost 30 people PB already, I think. Um, and Savadro we're seeing on quite the early pace here, minus 20 out of early game, um, with I know plenty of time to save in their upcoming chapters. Uh, potentially looking to close the gap to uh, the bracket cutoff point. What sort of basis is from Meridon too? Low to mid 28 here. Let me take a look. Quite a bit ahead of their 52-23. Uh, that run had a 28-44 temple exit, so staying about 20 seconds ahead there, uh, which, you know, with a good summit, um, is definitely potential to um, get back into like a mid 51 or so to push them back into the top 17. And just to let you all know, we will be joined very shortly by a special guest in the commentary booth here. We'll have a good amount of insight on all red berries for you, given his position. We'll wait and pause for the moment that he shows up, though. Yep, Ickle Chris, you got it, Math Hacker. That's who's joining us. That's so true. I love Ickle Chris. Known all red berries enjoyer. Hello. Well, well, well. Who do we have here? Welcome in, Isaac Tay. Holder of a new All Red Berries world record as of this event. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Decided one world record was enough for the day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing. I wanted to, like, get another one, but I don't know. I feel like I've peaked for the day. <laughs> understandable, understandable. Thank you for joining us for commentary here. Oh, I do have an info sheet I'll need to share with you. Let me go ahead and grab that. Okay. Yeah, what are your thoughts about uh, the format so far? How you've played, how others are playing? Just curious uh, to hear what you've been thinking. The format I really enjoy. I think it's really good. Um, I think it's a, like the perfect amount of time for, for some full game Arbor runs, so... Yeah, obviously I'm. Um, uh, I'm really happy with my own performance. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, hard hard to be <laughs> mad about a five second PB yeah. at the world record level. I don't think I could have really expected that. Yeah, definitely a different situation than doing runs entirely on your own time, on your own, on your own stream, when you're doing it here live for a bunch of people in a separate setting in a competition. Yeah, it, it is a bit different. I, I feel like, in a way, I play better like this, though. Hmm. I what don't do you know why. What makes the difference for you there? To be honest, I, I think it's because I'm nervous in the early game, so, like, you kind of get over the nerves towards late game. Or at least I, I feel like I do. So... That's almost the I, inverse I of how runs normally go, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. But like, because you get the nerves out of the way, you're not as nervous for the more important part, I think. Interesting. Do you think you're nervous in early game because you're not wanting to waste time and get paces going? I don't know. There's something about just competing in an event, like, right okay. at the start, the sure. nerves just kick in. 
you know, especially when you have many friends competing alongside you. Yeah. There's a little bit of extra competitive aspect that kicks in for that, for sure. Yeah, especially when you really don't want to lose to Tio, so... Oh, very important, yeah. <laughs> Can't be having that here. Exactly. Bragging rights is the most important part of this event for you. <laughs> I have nothing Eat else Tio, to play for, cool, so... <laughs> Importantly, we see Raccoon Gal about uh, 25 seconds ahead here, potentially looking to extend that lead. Yeah, 33 seconds now ahead out of Temple. This is... Uh, a pace that they need to get back into the top top seeds here, of course, with uh, Mr. Isaac here not being able to play in the last weekend. We are looking at seeds 2 through 17 as the bracket seeds currently. Yeah, what's up with that, Isaac? Why do you have to have uh, something else scheduled? I know, it's <laughs> unfortunate. My bad. Life happens. Really should, really should yeah. get my priorities straight, honestly. <laughs> That's just so true. The summer of ARB should come before everything else. <laughs> yep. I'm glad you still got to uh, play in this stage of the tournament. Yeah, yeah. I, I, in a way, it kind of motivated me even more to just like do as as well as I can in this stage. So I'd have like something come out of the tournament. Nova's on quite the pace as well here, about 40 seconds ahead in the depths. Yo. Nova's been popping here. off. Nova's PB before was like a 53 something? Trying yep, to pick 53, 22. We have an attempt at Revo's nonsense coming in. So, uh, it doesn't quite hit the ultra though. So he's PB'd by two minutes. Yeah, we've seen so many people uh, PB'ing um, in the event already, even though it's only been. You know, this is just the first weekend of it with weeks of bracket to come. Um, but so many large BBs too, especially from the crowd, you know, hasn't played the category as much, uh, improving their times quite a bit over the course of the last two days. We have like 50 or so unique runners here and just about half, like 25 to 30 of them, getting new PBs throughout the course of the event here. That's pretty crazy. You'd love to see that. Yeah, always happy to see more all red berries runs in the verification queue on SRC. We True. get lots of any percent all the time. Please play more all red berries. Honestly, this <laughs> is the biggest win of the the summer of ARB. Is the leaderboards are alive again. I I remember looking at the ARB leaderboards, seeing the entire top five be over a year ago, and it just made me cry every single time. But we're Tragedy back. Tragedy worth mourning. But we are so back now. I'm submitting any percent today just to spite you. Okay, crap. Crab, uh, come on. <laughs> Please don't do this to me. <laughs> well, at least Strawberry Jam Isles have strawberry in the name meta. So it's a slight True. improvement. Also worth mentioning that we've been having um, some of the music for Strawberry Jam on stream today. Shout outs to all the incredible artists who worked on that. Um, it's a massive original soundtrack for that mod pack, and all very well done. Yeah, an incredible effort that took, I think, a few years, and, you know, somewhere in the range of 100 people, 100-ish levels, is that correct? Huge collaborative effort. Yeah, it is over 100 levels, I believe. The music is amazing. It is. Personally, I'm a Bean Jam and Stan. <laughs> Nova and Raccoon Gal saving more and more time here. It's a pretty significant placement um, pace for Nova, looking to move up a few seeds. Then, of course, for Raccoon Gal just to be in bracket stage at all. Yeah, they're looking to improve their current time by, I think, is it about 31 seconds to get into bracket for Raccoon Gal at the moment? Yes. Yeah, so this is a very important pace to be on here. Being about 33 seconds ahead, it is the pace to have. But gotta hold that all the way through the rest of 6B Summit and Core here. Oh, 
What would you say is your favorite level, not necessarily to play, but to watch when it comes to All Red Berries, Isaac? To watch? Yeah, like one that might stand out more just from being interesting when other people are doing it with different strats, or, you know, the like. Uh, I think uh, Temple is a fun one to watch always. I know it's always uh, talked about as the GOAT. Um, I mean, obviously with the new 5A start route as well. It's interesting to see which players decide to go for that and which players don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think when it comes to how different the level is from the just clear version of it, I think Mary Temple would definitely stand out there given that it's essentially double the clear time for when you're adding yeah, the berries. I don't think any of the other chapters really compare except for Golden Ridge there. Yeah, because so much of it is hub rooms with the uh, berries all over the place, you kind of just breeze through a lot of the parts of Temple A side if you're not collecting the berries. Yeah, you turn a maze into just such a point A to point B experience when you're doing clear versus or doing berries versus clear there. Also shout nice. out to Summit. Because oh, Summit yeah. is just my favorite level to play. I love watching Summit as well. I completely agree. I, I just really love how open and fluid it feels, having the two dashes and options available to you. Like, when you're playing it through the very, very first time you're playing Celeste, it feels a lot more restricted because, yeah, you do have two dashes, but the obstacles are built to accommodate that. But when you have two dashes as a speedrunner with all the options available to you, it's so freeing. It's just so fluid. Yeah. Another cool little thing we got going on here, if you look at the right side of our screen, we got Raccoon, Gal, and Mishy doing separate levels, 6B and 6A. Another another difference going on here. Mishy hoping to be coming through with a sub-hour. I'm not quite sure where the pace is for that. It seems to be looking decent at the moment, given that she's in the later portions of uh, Rock Bottom here. And we also have Raccoon, Gal now finishing up in 6B. Just about a 4x. Yeah, 34.50 there. Um, I think that's... Yeah, so lost a little chunk of time in the latter half of uh, 6B, unfortunately. Coming out to still be a little bit ahead, if I'm reading splits correctly. They're going to need to make up some time going through Summit and Core to qualify for the top 16. Nova coming up on the last few rooms of rescue here. Let's see if Nova's able to pull off the ultra chain. This is pace from Nova. Nova. Oh no! Retrying at the very Dude. end of the final room there. Oh. I haven't seen that one in so long. Thought he, that he had already hit the eyeball with Theo, but just does not manage to pull through. It was mere frames before that, it seemed. I mean, the pace is still great. I just hope Nova's not going to be hurt uh, mentally too much by that one. Yeah, uh, I think anybody would get a little bit tilted after a retry I, like that. I would uh, be fuming. <laughs> uh, no blame at all if the uh, rest this of the pace, run is This pace for Nova same. is very good. Like, this is, this is like sub-50 pace. Yeah, 2741 coming out of Mirror Temple here. Definitely sub-50-able. It's Gonna really good. Shake off that tilt potential out of Mirror Temple, though, for the end game. His reflection's coming up right up next, and we all know how tilting reflection has the propensity to be. Yes. <laughs> I know Nova's not really much of a 6B enjoyer, um, but hopefully it can have mercy on him this time around. Test this once. <laughs> have mercy on his soul, Jukio Kalio. All right, and swapping over to a new set of runners here now. We got Era 404, Ninja, and Julie all in core at the moment. Satellite Sam just about to take a step in. And Sam looking to be on a very solid pace given that he has about seven minutes to work with here to improve his leaderboard time. I think we are also getting similar for Era 404, given that he's at very uh, 172 here with about Ooh, another six minutes as well. Oh one. no! Yeah, losing that berry. Very unfortunate. 
Hopefully not gonna get too stuck the in the pinball. bumpers here. <laughs> we love a bit of pinball. Oh yeah, 172 pinball happens to everybody, even it's the best very... ones. <laughs> it's so annoying. One might call it pinball purgatory, even. <laughs> At least the bumpers in that level don't wiggle. I think one of the very rooms, ironically enough, happens yeah. to be where the bumpers start to wiggle in that that uh, strawberry jam chapter. That, that was a room I decided to ignore. <laughs> Didn't exist for your playthrough. Yeah. Understandable. Understandable. Nobody's reported. I was going to say that uh, Julie's reported BB coming to this event was uh, high 107, so it looks like they've already broken that and are looking to do so again about a minute ahead here into Ridge. Let's go. Oh, Ninja going for that top bumper in this, uh, in this room here. Haven't quite seen that strat before. And having to wait around to get another dash crystal to guarantee that berry, but manages it without an incident of death. So this is looking to be a solid pace for Ninja as well. If oh, I'm yeah. reading that right, we have about eight to nine minutes to work with to get through the rest of core here and improve uh, leaderboard PB here. Probably overall RPB as well, if I'm not mistaken. I'm seeing a 109 RPB, so looking to get closer to that time, it looks like. Mm -hmm. There's definitely potential to improve on that if the rest of this goes well, but could be getting a little bit tight. Sam enters part of the mountain at 5630. Yeah, this is big uh, sub-hour potential if you can close this out cleanly. And if not, there is still another 22 minutes available to runners to get resets in and get their final runs going. So there's a little bit more time to try and get another run at the very end here. One of the insights I wish we had today is how some of the uh, old ARB runners who started in the beginning, like Coral, Bubs, Scott, Ryunata, how they how they feel about how much ARB has changed to become what it is today. Because the category has definitely advanced a lot over just the past year or so, when interest early on was relatively low compared to any percent. To be honest, I think the those players you just mentioned are responsible for most of the strat changes. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> most yeah, of the labbing did still in come particular. From. Yeah, they did a lot of labbing. Real lab monkeys of all red berries. Fueling the machine. The strat dump. <laughs> yeah, the strats channel just getting a massive, <laughs> massive quantity. What was that like? Something from 50 to 80 strat posts all on at once from Ryunata. And I think. Yeah, it was enough that I closed there. the channel down for them uh, to just post <laughs> all at once. Just to at least have it in one segment. Back to the action at hand, we have Error 404 in the cassette room here, as well as Ninja and Satellite Sam not too far behind in the horizontal sections of core here at the very end. Error 404 grabbing the cassette. And looking to have a healthy minute and a half of time save over event PB here coming up. Yeah, almost two minutes even. Oh, and actually manages part of the ultra chain there as well. <laughs> Bouncing off the heart at the end. But yeah, minute 45 just about improvement. Congrats to Error 404.
Ninja grabbing the cassette as well. Headed in to get about a five minute improvement on uh, his event time. Collecting the heart. <laughs> so many heart collects right at the same time. Satellite Sam. As well. Yeah. Is that three improvements like <laughs> in like a minute? <laughs> yeah. GG's to all the runners there. Ninja Era 404 and Satellite Sam all for improving their times here. And if we're taking a look at the top left, we seem to have Julie on a pretty solid pace. If the three prior golds before this at City Sight and Resort are real golds going on here. That looks like a minute ahead for Julie at the very least. All right, and coming in with a new set of players, we now have Detroit Yeet, Dragon 512, Virtle, and Vapo on our screens here. Vapo looking to be decently green on his splits here. Yeah, 48-able. Meanwhile, Virtle entering Summit at a mid-31. Uh, which put him well ahead of his 48.10 from yesterday. Not entirely sure how it stacks up to his uh, 47 from earlier this session. But this should be uh, winnable for him. Oh, dying going through the Nero drop there for that first time. Gonna go back around on another lap for a second try. So that's definitely losing a few seconds for Virtle. But not the end of the world. Got a lot more chapter to go. We're seeing a pretty fast cycle through this room here from Virtle. Are we going to get the quick landing at the end of the room? Not quite. Hoping for the demo though. Oh, it doesn't quite get the setup right, but gets it on a backup. Yeah, it looked like he just didn't buffer that second down right before the transition. Yeah, I didn't quite get the spacing on it right. We do get the triple demo though here. Nice. Big fan. That strat always looks so cool. Was it Primu who found that one on his brief foray into I think it Summit was, Yeah. Really cool find and from one of the uh, runners. <laughs> yeah, it just works. Really cool find from one of the runners that hasn't been around the community too much, but made some really, really cool improvements behind the scenes. I'm hoping this run works out well for Vapo, because looking at the pace, this is looking like a what is that, a minus 24-ish into Temple here? So if that run yeah, is working is. out, then I think Vapo is setting up to potentially go for a 48 here. Yeah, and that would push him up uh, one leaderboard position uh, above Quan. UK currently very well represented in the top eight spots here. <laughs> you love to see it. Vapo's a very interesting runner, because it doesn't seem like he ever needs to do too much de-rusting. He can just like come back and get a really solid time. Yeah, I think some of the difference with Vapo compared to maybe some other runners is having loads of overall experience and then also getting really, really comfortable with his strats. Like, there are people who make strat evolutions a lot over time. I don't think Vapo necessarily has done that as much, save for his recent any percent grind. But for the strats that he does pick, he seems to get very, very consistent with them. Yeah, he likes the comfy strats. Losing a fair bit of time to Depth's Gold here for Vapo, but still uh, pulling ahead, actually. Now about 30 seconds ahead. And we're seeing a 5-minute improvement for Ninja on the leaderboard. But coming in with that mid-109 that we were seeing them uh, finish out just a bit ago. Mm -hmm. 
big improvements here from a few of our runners. So congrats again, and GG's to all of the runners throughout the course of this event who have gotten new Allred Berries PBs. Always happy to see those coming through. Don't forget to submit, we'll be very happy to see those on the SRC boards. I'm also seeing on the leaderboard, Temp Felix seems to have gotten a 51.45, just missing that cutoff section by uh, one second. So, for his sake, I hope you can keep in, oh my goodness, I hope he can get on another good pace. Yeah, we definitely had a lot of shifting for the time required to get into the top 16 earlier on in the session today, but coming towards the end, it's slowed to a bit of a stop at 51.44 there. I think that's still Olivia sitting at that spot, was it? Correct. Yep. Yeah, so it's come down in pretty much exactly one minute today. And Temp Felix only 0.9 behind, so that is frustratingly close. Hoping he's able oh. to pull, pull it off with a, another run here towards the end. Olivia has been hanging on to that 17th spot. Oh yeah, time. hanging on by a thread <laughs> at this point. Worth mentioning for Dragon that her 55 yesterday was already a multi-minute PB. I believe potentially beating out her sum of best at the start of the run. Um, yeah, I, I think it was like four minute PB for Dragon, like 59-ish yeah. to 55. So definitely tough to match that, you know, not having too much time to improve your ILs here between the two sessions. We got Vertal entering 3k here now at about 40.25 on the file timer. So if all goes well here, this could be about a, I think that's a 44 exit for Vertal. So not quite in the range to be improving upon event PB here, but still looking to get a solid run. Oh, just finishing out the last one for the day and being satisfied. What? What sort of math are you doing? Did I mess up by a minute? Let me see here. Oh, did I say? I thought 3.40, didn't I? Hold on. <laughs> 3k is 2 minutes and 40 seconds for a really fast 3k. My mistake. <laughs> let, let me think about that again. Yeah, okay, yeah, never mind. That's definitely PBable. <laughs> Thank you, Jax. <laughs> it's been a bit, a bit of a long, longer morning, you know. <laughs> Looks like you we're going to see... though. Yeah. Oh, we even get a, a sub checkpoint split here with part of the mountain split into two segments. A couple deaths, but uh, Raccoon Gal's comparison here has about seven seconds of time save in this section anyway. Um, so hopefully, not losing too much time to it. And I mean, she's currently on pace for a low 51. Which is... Looks like her recorded PB is 51.15, so I think splits are comparing against um, the more recent events mid-run, but still, this oh, is no. something that needs to... Oh no. Oh. Yeah, it looks like... They the need to, clear, to finish this first. out if they want to be able to make it into, into the bracket stage here. Gotta get better than 51.44, so just about 31 seconds to improve on here. Comparison is cope apparently <laughs> not sure what that means i think maybe a goal time for the event okay is that what they put as the comparison name <laughs> oh, yes. all caps cope <laughs> oh my goodness classic all right gal move. 10 seconds of wiggle room Best possible time is currently at 51.33. This is going to be close. Winnable, winnable. I'm excited. Crucially, there is still time to start another run after this one. Meanwhile, we but... have Vapo with the first try. Lake skip. Vertal getting the demo. And no draft at the end of 3k as well. So it looks like it's going well for some of our other runners. Looking good so far. Looks 
looks good. Very nicely done. Hopefully like the hot room behaves. 51.32 just about. Nice. Yep, 51.32. GG's Raccoon Gal on making it into the top 16. With nine minutes left to reset. Probably not feeling super safe with that. There's a few players uh, definitely on their tail here. Oh, yeah, um, getting close for sure. We've got, yeah, four players within 40 seconds. You see Virtal entering core at about 43.12 or so, I believe. Um, so definitely looking to also push lower into the, the 47s here. Uh, this can be significant for his seed entering bracket. I think Vertal does have a 3 4x core ILPB, so. I believe so. If he is able to hit all the strats, then. Definitely be improving by quite a bit here. Yeah, could be looking at a low 47 PB, possibly even. All right, checking in with some of our 51 runners here. Nova and Tokikuma are currently uh, in the event by about 10 seconds, and Olivia out of the event by 10 seconds, looking to get on a run in the last few minutes of the reset session here. Meanwhile, Wibs with the 55, that's why just looking to improve a little bit. That uh, 56 pack I mentioned earlier has largely um, also pushed into the 55 range. We've now got five runners with 55 times four runners with 56 is spreading out a little bit there i think we'll be looking to uh catch the end of Vertle's run as well in a few moments Six and a half more minutes for players to get in their final resets as we get Vertil back up on screen here in Heart of the Mountain. Looks like decent goal pace. Yeah, I think there was a bit of struggle there that was probably going on hot and cold, but this is still potential to be improving both his PB and event PB here. Oh yeah, quite a bit. I think that was about a 46.15 entry into the uh, horizontal section here. So possible for 47.1x. Yeah, it looks like he's not going to catch Gooms, but definitely uh, extend the lead over Luca by quite a bit uh, if this run finishes out clean. We also have Nova finishing up 3k at the moment. Making his way through flag two. So two runners finishing up some notable checkpoints here. Oh, that all... Doesn't quite land the cassette strat. The strat is so hard. Oh no, second try failure as well. Brodo's really got to get through. There we go. Okay. I don't think it's enough though. I, th I think they're still getting a good 5 to 10 seconds here. Yeah, but should, it's not a lot. Should be an improvement. A good hot room, yeah. Stop throwing file name. Very nice. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> a little bit of meta commentary there. <laughs> getting to 4731. GG. 
Seven second PB for Vertal. Congratulations. His fourth PB of the weekend, my new. My goodness. Very excited to see what he can do in bracket stage. Meanwhile, we have Nova entering core now. I think that was a low 46 pace into the chapter here. Maybe mid 46, just about. But either way, seems to be a decent chunk of time available to Nova to get a PB here. Yeah, I'm seeing a best possible time of 50-31. Uh, which could potentially move him up quite a few quite a few positions. Uh, especially with the gold or two. You know, there's three players clustered at 50-29 and 50-30. Um, if he ends up beating those players, that could be a 15th to 9th. If he finishes just behind them, uh, then that could be uh, like an 11th place position. Yeah, Goof Goose and Wonderbus sitting at 50-29 and 50-30 with barely any frames between them. So getting ahead of both of them at once would be a pretty solid jump in seed position if Nova could manage. Oh, we see Mishy closing out a uh, sub-hour run just barely with a 59.54 uh, on the board on the right. Very nicely done. Congratulations to Mishy. That'll be first sub-hour arb for Mishy as well then, isn't it? Yeah, their PB coming into the event was a 101.06. Nice. So, a little bit over a minute of improvement getting past two-minute barriers as well. We are down to the final two and a half minutes to reset here. Final countdown coming in hot. I'm wondering if we'll see any uh, notable shifts in the final runs that players will get. It's not too likely, I think. We have plenty of players who are nearly about to call it, but we'll see what can be done here. How's Olivia's early game pace looking here? Seeing red, but uh, should be pretty close, I think. Yeah, that was about a, I think a 6.30 entry into Resort here. So pretty solid. Red, but not by too much. Nova getting Barry 175 as well. Yeah, with those unfortunate deaths in hot and cold, Nova's best possible time has gone up quite a bit, uh, but still possible to close out about a 15 second improvement here. Mm -hmm. Looking at a 49.53 just about on the timer for the entry into the horizontal section at the end here. So that's likely a low 51 that's going to be coming in for us with Nova's run. And that would be a new RPB as well, if Nova's able to beat this time. So many PBs we've been seeing today. Ooh, we've got Quan in the end of core as well, potentially on 48 base here. Yeah, it looks like just about. <laughs> I have to really squeeze by, but I'm hoping for the best for Quan. 48 would be very cool to see here. Nova gets the cassette. Noting that Quan's RPB is a 48.58, so I think he's barely within reach to get an actual PB for the uh, through this run here. And and with the timer now counting point. up. Players can no longer reset, so this will be the last run for Quan. As well as Nova with a 5107. Very nice. 14 second improvement there. Just to solidify their position a little bit. 
14 second event improvement and overall RPB for Nova. Yet another PB added to the list here. Looks like Nova had started the event with a 53.22, so that's about 2 minutes 15 seconds of ARB improvement for Nova over the course of this. Ooh, Guan electing to not do the save and quit. I think that might cost him 48. Oh, just not quite getting it here. Oh. I don't think the save and quit was the deciding factor, but still. <laughs> yeah. Event improvement by 3 seconds. <laughs> so good work, Quan. What is the strat from Tokikumo? I'm out of the loop. Not quite sure what I saw there. I'm going to pull up a clip real quick, take a look back. All right, we got Salt, Vapo, Enin, and Luca on the screen here. Vapo deep into a run on good pace. The other is still in early game here. Oh, the strat that we saw to, uh, <gasps> Toki Kuma going for, I think, was a Vapo original, in fact. If anyone is seeing Luca's postcard here, he's missing uh -oh. a certain collectible. Uh oh. Uh. <laughs> I think uh -oh. we might have just witnessed the end of Luca's open stage run. <laughs> That's unfortunate. That's definitely one way to go out. Is that 1A heart that was missing? I can't tell anymore. Oh, no. 3A heart. 3A. Mm. Oh, yeah. But a fantastic uh, fifth place performance from Luca here, which will put him at seed four in the bracket stage, the 47 45. It's a remarkable time to get. Ooh, we got Catman on quite the pace here as well. Definitely a sizable amount of green on those splits right now for Catman. And I'm pretty sure the comparison would have to be the 5119, given that is both his event PB and real PB as of recently. Yes, it is. Both Vapo and Catman are comparing to their current best times in the event. Uh, Vapo looks like having. Leading a little bit of time throughout this summit, now only 11 seconds ahead, um, but can still close out a 48 with very good segments here. Yeah, Captain in particular, like almost 50 seconds ahead. This could be massive. Wow, so there's maybe potential to even push it all the way to 49 if Cora goes well too after this for Catman. That would be a huge jump if He's able to pull it off. And then with two PBs yesterday, looks like has not been able to close out anything faster yet today. Um, but we'll see how his pace is doing at the end of resort here. Salt's looking to be on an all right pace as well going into resort. I believe he came in at about somewhere in the range of 6.30. That would be on pace to have some improvement. Sounds like Meridon is out of the running with multiple berries being lost in 2A, so they will not be able to close out a 51 to get back into bracket, but very well played from them. Yeah, GG's to Meridon. Good attempts.
Oh, Catman dying late on 5 4. Five four oh. is rough. Having a struggle with the demo here. This is gonna take take a bit out of the pace. Still had a lot to work with, so there's there is some wiggle room here for improving his time. But the big jump of potentially beating the uh, two runners at I think it was fifty fifty thirty fifty thirty one ish. That big jump might be out of the cards now. If he's still able to make it though, that would be a sizable jump in seed position for the bracket stage. Meanwhile, Vapo at 49.15, likely only able to take a jump to ahead of Quan at 49.02. Would have to save 13 seconds on his current PB here to make it happen. This time we see from Salt a uh, file that did manage to grab the 3A heart, as opposed to what happened to Luca. So, <clears throat> still able to continue with this run. But yeah, some greedy menuing on save and quitting too early from the 3A heart. Definitely a bit of a run killer. But a little easier than one might expect. 46.15 with a good core. This is still... Uh, potentially like a mid to low 50. Very we'll possible. see what uh, Catman's familiarity with this level is, having just learned the category recently. Um, yeah, I think a top level core is probably one of the, you know, easier chapters, but executing it under pressure is super tough. Really appreciating the uh, core music coming in through the broadcast as well at this moment. Feel like it adds a little bit to the dramatic suspense here. I'm excited to see how this run goes, how it finishes for Catman. Meanwhile, Vapo at flag one, looking to be finishing up Summit here at just about a 44-40, I think this is gonna be. Maybe a little bit over that. Yep, 44-41. Minus, Minus 14, you said? Yeah. Only needs to save 13 seconds to jump ahead of Quan, and 15 seconds to be getting into a 48-minute barrier. Oh, Salt, unfortunately losing one of the berries from the double berry room here. Nice backup, though, getting it pretty quickly on his way back in. Very nice movement in uh, that room and getting a paused one frame climb set up for Demo Dash. They will get in through Ice Skip with a lineup on the left wall there. Very collected. And Catman in the vertical section here. A little running out of stamina, getting into a bit of trouble there, but still manages to get through without much more incident. Going for the faster cycle in this room as well. Saving both of these dashes and getting this hyper here. Does manage to grab that cycle and the wall bounce up and wall kick over. These are some pretty intense strats Catman's going for. Ooh. Attempted the lava wall bounce as well, but didn't quite manage. Making sure to conserve stamina there, not wanting to have to play that room again. Now for the longest room here of the vertical section. Doesn't quite manage to grab the corner. Oh, oh no, and bonks on bonk. the way up. Oh, that, that could be a pretty devastating setback here. Still looking for potential to get into the 
mid 50 range for Catman. Yeah, that deck puts him out of range of the 50 29 and 50 30 players. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Vapo on the vertical section now as well, so not too far behind in terms of where they are on the level. Oh, Catman having the lava really high in that room coming to the end there. I don't know, minus 19. Really excited for this potential 48 for Vapo. <gasps> I have faith. Vapor will overcome. I believe in Vapo. Catman getting through cassette room here now. Not too much incident there. Getting the cassette touch just about 50-31 here. So we're looking at about a high 50 coming into the final room at 50-39. Yeah, I'm thinking like 50-51-ish for Catman. Yeah, somewhere around the... Oh, that'll be a 52 now. He's used to Catman, though, for about a, another 27 seconds of a PB here. Yeah, that, that moves him up uh, three leaderboard positions. Yeah, that could be huge for seeding. For sure. All right, Vapo coming on the cassette room here at the end of core. Found it a little bit close, but still has the potential for a 48 here with a touch at 48.39. Has to have a clean final room to pull this off. Does the save include for a little bit of added time save? It's possible to get a 48 that. Got a few seconds of leeway too. Oh, oh, come no. on. Squeeze I, by. I, I, no! By frames. 49 oh, flat. No. <laughs> oh, no. I'm so sorry, Vapo. Still, though, no. <laughs> managed to jump a spot ahead of Quan, but not quite the 48. It's a point zero as well. Oh, Vapo 41 will never get a 48 all red berry speedrun. <laughs> no. GG is all the same to Vapo though. Jumping up to what will be, or what looks like at this point at least, uh, seed six for the upcoming bracket stage. Yeah, with lots of players finishing out their final runs here, the field is thinning. Got Wonder here, the only player um, in serious contention for a bracket. Uh, but Cookie, Detroit, and Epic each looking to improve their times here in overtime. If there was one nightmare of a strat in all red berries that you could just instead instead decide worked 100% of the time, just magically, which one would you think it would be, Isaac? Uh, that's a tough one. It's probably something in cold though, because you just want everything to work. The because uh, the end of the run, don't want anything falling apart at the end. Yeah. I mean, if I could do that with the the fast cassette strat in 8A, that would be lovely. That would be great. Uh, but if I <laughs> have to pick the strat that I do, I'd probably say Berry 172. That one is so annoying. Because it just shouldn't 
be that bad, but it just is. <laughs> the classic pinball purgatory of 172. Yep. Ooh, Cookie managing a nice little Oshiro bop earlier in the room here and barely squeezing out ahead of him at the end. I was very close to death twice in a row there. A little bit of breaking news beyond the heart coming in for you now. As we have both Detroit Yeet and Epic in the early stages of 500 meters are up here. And I think we at the very least have Epic on what could be a PBable pace in Summit here. It does have a 114, hour 14 minutes on the board here. And currently at 49 minutes and 500. So there's a decent chunk that's available to him. Got a bit of a throwback question for you, Isaac. You were part of the Celeste Summer Open, correct? Yes. Back when we were... Okay, and so with that experience, do you think you'd have, since you won't be participating in the uh, bracket stage for the Strawberry Showdown coming up, do you think you'd have any advice for some of the runners when we actually get to bracket stage soon? Uh, I'd say don't panic. If you, if you have a bad early game, Definitely don't panic, just keep playing, do your strats, and don't pay too much attention to what your opponent is doing. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to let that get in your head, just do your thing and whatever happens, happens. Yeah, I definitely agree on the do your own strats part. The shaky mental of Having the nerves from racing can make people indecisive sometimes, but making sure to just stick to what you know and not try and improvise or change things on the moment because you've gotten nervous is very important. Being yeah, confident in what you do already. Yeah, that's a good point is don't change to uh, safer strats that you haven't practiced because you are more likely to fail a strat, uh, an easy strat that you haven't practiced over a hard strat that you have practiced. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Be confident in what you do. <laughs> yeah. And collect your berries, please. Oh yeah, absolutely, that's <laughs> huge. Not collecting berries could be a lot more killer in the uh, double elimination bracket coming up because those, even though it is double elimination, those are individual races players will be having against each other. When we get into later stages, I think the the uh, winners, losers, and grand finals, I believe that those will be best of three, and at the end, I think best of five. Could be wrong on the exact details of that. But So there's a little bit more room for leeway when it comes to failures from not collecting berries. But all the same, very important to collect, especially in races. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think you might have brought this up earlier before I was on the stream, but... One of the big improvements that's happened to Arb lately is we have eliminated the two-A start berry train. So <laughs> oh, yeah. it does so not lose more too much time to collect the berries in two-A start. So there's no need, especially in a race scenario, to be carrying five berries into intervention. No excuse for intervention one-up except for bragging rights, just to say that you did it. But even then, come on, just chill out, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Collect your berries, if I, please. If I see anyone lose the race to dying with five berry train and intervention, then I will not have any sympathy for that. <laughs> That's on you. But for real, I think the 
the tournament kind of motivated it, like us to find more collect strats for Twist Start, but mm -hmm. because they lose such little time, it's honestly good to just do them in full game because, at least for me, I feel if I have a berry train, I'm just not going to be playing as confidently as if I do have a 5 berry train and if I die the run is over, oh, even yeah. in just in PB attempts. like. I don't want to have to reset a bunch in sight, so if I don't have a berry train, I can read my movement more, and then I'll end up just saving time in the end anyway. Yeah, training berries is always just a much more dangerous setting, because with that many behind you, and you die, and there's some that are cut off to the checkpoint behind you where it would be just the end of your run, it's almost like you're changing the way you have to play to be like, instead of speed running, you're deathless running and just trying to go somewhat fast at that point. And that's yeah. not what you want to be in the mindset for. I swear, we've got quite the sync, never mind. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> we got <laughs> Raccoon Gal heading up into the beginning of unraveling very soon here at the Seeker, and Savadra about halfway through the checkpoint. I've just um, dodged that Seeker. But if Seeker we check... did not go where he wanted it to, but... What is this pace from <laughs> Seth? It's a big pace, and Raccoon also on a on a pace in Temple. Yeah, these two are both on Peter paces. Sev may may potentially, you know, if he closes this out strong, potentially able to jump up like two minutes to get into uh, the bracket standings. I know he was yesterday looking to get a 52, but uh, with this pace today, he may be in contention to get a 51. Oh. oh, a little bit of comms curse coming in with an unfortunate death near the end of this final room of unraveling, but still a solid pace all the same. The se that seeker is really not cooperating. Uh, but they are on it's roughly good, similar IGT paces here. We have a little bit of a time difference because that was a little bit further ahead in the level, but a bit of a race going on here between the two of them. I think Sev was a bit nervous coming in because he he kind of had a feeling he would be somewhere near the cutoff, so it's pretty tight for him, but if he manages to pull this off now, that would be a really incredible clutch. Absolutely. We have Raccoon Gal on the right as the gatekeeper of the top 17 needed to make it into bracket stage at the moment with that 51-32. So Sev would need to surpass them in his attempt here, given that this is the final run that these players can be doing. Yeah, we may end up seeing the threshold fall below a 51.28 if uh, Raccoon pushes her time faster than Tokikumo, and then Sev needing to then PB by like a minute and 45 seconds is no small, t no small ask. Oh, not quite making that cycle on the uh, crumble block strat there. Really cool to see when it's done well, regardless. So I'm going to be entering rescue at somewhere around a 27.15, if all goes well in these last couple of rooms. Oh, does not quite oh. pop the seeker into the coin. Having a bit of a struggle back there. And we are never going to know if Sev got through that room. I believe I'm it. sure we'll he check did. in with them in a bit. <laughs> he made it. No question. <laughs> Meanwhile, we have Julie in the top left here in the relatively early stages of core, but with what's looking like some pretty decent splits, if I'm reading that correctly, because there's about six minutes, five to six minutes of leeway for Julie to be uh, getting a PB here. Also checking in on Dragon in the bottom left, with about uh, about at the 43 minute mark, and somewhere around halfway through Summit right now. So if the rest of this goes pretty well, I'm thinking, let's see, that would be at 6 and Back a half, it up. like 11. There yeah, this go. is looking like it's PB pace for Dragon here too, in the bottom left in Summit. Yeah, she's almost dead even with uh, yesterday's 55.42, uh, maybe a few seconds ahead.
Jelly managing to have some solid progress through the vertical section here. Not too many pitfalls, taking it nice and safe, but at a steady pace. Looking to be pretty secure on her way to be getting a PB here. Simplex on the top right having a little bit of trouble with the uh, demo berry over here. Oh, got some misdirect straight out to the left when trying to dash down there. There we go. Demo through the spikes. Not seeing any shakeups on the leaderboard at the moment. Yeah, ever since Raccoon Gal passed up Olivia, that 17th spot has held firm since then. Yeah, and 16 through 30 has also looked pretty stable. A lot of the same time sticking around there. Of course, with players having had now about seven hours if they played in both days, it makes sense that improvements would slow down. I think a yeah, lot fatigue. of people took that opportunity to reset quite near to the end of the time. Yeah, trying to get one last good run while you can, especially if you still need it. The fatigue of playing for two days for some of these players can be catching up on them at the end here. So hopefully they're able to finish out runs decently well. This is a this is a banger. It's Kid Icarus music. The Icarus Kid slash Game Shop's first steps remix. I feel like I've heard these as separate songs that were their two unique remixes that they then mashed together. Is that what's going on here? I'm not sure. <laughs> Dig it. Really finishing out her run, looking to be a one and a half minute improvement. Very nicely done. Oh, had a dash there and didn't use it, but one hundred four thirty three. Another PB. Checking in on Dragon here. This pace is still looking to be pretty solid for the moment. Although we have a new set of runners up on screen now for you. Got Gooms and Vertal. And what are going to be their final runs? We got Gooms on. I think I might. Am I seeing a significant bit of green That's in those splits? A minus twenty point five. Minus twenty out of reflection on. 47-13 splits. Gooms is having viability for a 46 coming up of Summit and Core go well here. This is, yeah, pretty big 46 pace. We also had a 14 second improvement from Jimmy Klein come in a bit ago, which actually pushes him up like three spots uh, into the 12th seed now. Oh, really dense in those few spots on the leaderboard. Congrats, Jimmy, for getting a better seed there. And Bullet Dancer once again a minute ahead here. Uh, what was what was his BB coming into the event? I feel like it was way higher than it is now. Bullet let me, Dancer let me take PB a look. On an hour 19 coming into the event here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a full seven to eight minutes of improvement Bullet Dancer already has. Looking to potentially be getting more because is that a minus a minute I think out of Mirror Temple on the splits down below there? Yes, it is. Isaac, I trust you to keep us informed with high-level summit bases. 
Because I just okay. don't know him. Uh, this probably isn't ideal for Gooms, but it's not like too bad. Alrighty. Well, he had probably a... want to be hitting the orb like around like a high mid three one x. So it's only a few seconds lost. Okay. And then, of course, his PB has a 402 core, so, you know, there's like 20 seconds of time save there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> core is a chapter that never goes wrong, especially if you're doing the strats that Gooms does, so... Just 3-4x, you can do it again, right, Gooms? Turtle have a having a pretty pretty clean time through six B start so far here. Don't think it was the best mirror temple exit for Virtle since that was looking like it was around a somewhere in the mid twenty six range, but still decent. Looking at Jimmy's... five diags from Virtle. Jimmy's improvement that he got just now. He appears to have missed PB by 0.3. Oh no. <laughs> well, congrats on getting so close to it's PB very close. there, Jimmy. <laughs> Definitely a really good time to be getting in the open stage here. Bullet Dancer taking a long death in this room. The 6A last battle in room is so tough. If what Katri is saying in chat is correct, we might be a little bit off on what we thought the uh, seating positions were. Because both Tokikumo and Isaac might not be participating in the bracket. Where do we have Tokikumo at? Yeah, he's... Tokikumo has gotten into the 16th spot, so if he's not participating in bracket either, then Olivia has made the cut. Although I'm not entirely sure about that. I'd be happy to get a confirmation if we could. I have punged them. Yeah, but if that is true, then we do have a bit more people, or, well, one more person, I suppose, in the uh, top spots than we previously thought. Olivia actually continuing to make the cut. And one thing that's been nice to see is Tom148 with the 5102 running from just yesterday. He's still sitting in there at 14th on the leaderboard, so... Pretty comfortably going to be making it into the bracket stage, despite only having the opportunity to run for one of the two days. That's very impressive, since I, I feel like I've only seen them like rising up the leaderboards recently. So, Personally, I have not seen their name at all, ever, but I'm, I guess, a little out of touch with current runners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I admit I'm in the same boat with you there, Jax. I had not quite caught uh, Tom 148's run, but... Yes. It's looking like it, Tom. Tom it's looking like it. There would have to be how many? I think almost three other runners surpassing 5102, which would be uh, three four, people actually. making like 40, 50, four, four runners. Yeah, that would be that would be very surprising to see that happen. So pretty sure, pretty sure he's made it. Mega lol. <laughs> Thirty-one forty from Virtle here. How's he doing? Let's see. Thirty-one forty. You said on reflection exit. Yeah. Once well, again, if... keeping pace. I mean, if everything goes really well for Virtle, it's technically like forty-five pace, but I don't think that's what we're going to be seeing here. I think 46 is very doable, though.
Looking like Gooms on low mid 11 pace in Summit here. So should be still ahead. And just to elaborate a bit more on Virtual's pace, if that was 3140 heading into a summit here, that would take like an 1110 and a 410 for both summit and then core, and then that could where is Gooms going? Be coming out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where? <laughs> where are you going, Gooms? <laughs> the movement for those berries is uh pretty difficult. A little bit awkward at times, yeah. Got Dragon here on the right, potentially closing out a low 55. We'll see how these last couple runs in the vertical section go. Yeah, a little bit, cutting it a little bit close on that, but got about 20 or 15 to 20 seconds of buffer for mistakes and still would be able to uh, get a decent improvement there. Oh, accidentally getting the ultra off of one of those bumpers, but falling straight into a pit with it. Small setback. Still think this is possible for Dragon to PB. Another short death. Just gotta hold strong, Dragon. I believe she stopped in chat to say that she would have to PB core for this to then be an Ooh. RPV as well. Unfortunate bounce in the feather room here. I'm not sure if this is doable anymore. It's going to be close if it is. Cape touch at 55, 24. We're going to be see entering. Yeah, this is... I, I don't think this is doable anymore. Might be able to get like some milliseconds if this room goes oh, very well. Not anymore. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Slight fall uh, away from the platform. Be. This room is brutal. Oh, oh no. no! In the it corner, kick at the end. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right of fastest. Right of fastest. Of shame. <laughs> good try, dragon. It was a good effort. All right, and we get to see Tio on screen pace. here. This is looking like a 40-20 just about, and entering uh, entering 3K. So, if, definitely let's see, possible a 40, to 20. get a slight improvement here. It's looking like it's Gooms. gonna be very tight though. Goom's probably not able to improve anymore. Has lost too much time to the summit, it seems. I think he can still get oh, wait. it here. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm tripping. I know yeah, Tio at the very fine. least is in uh, range for maybe a few seconds of improvement if he practically plays flawlessly for the rest of Summit and Core. But otherwise, hold him tight at that 46 new minute barrier. Gooms though. Coming in at 42, 47, just about for flag one. So this is looking like if he plays a Gooms level core, could be beating out Tio's time and getting another 46. So that would be another PB for him in this event. Yeah, 42, 55 and Gooms best core time is a 3... I think about a 3.42 if you're including the file time. So, technically possible to get even like a 46.4x for Gooms here. Getting a bet from Math Hacker in chat that he's gonna get 46 but not beat Tio. Thing that he's going to squeeze in in like the 10 to 11 frame bit. It's just a little bit slower than Tio. I think he's going to frame tie. I'm 
Felix on a pretty important run too right now. He's um, either one or 15 seconds off of uh, bracket positioning. This could be a very important run. Satellite Sam slightly green on his sub hour base from earlier. Yeah. Theo's summit exit 4310. Yeah. Tio needs to hand the controller to Gooms right now, but Gooms is a little busy, so I don't I don't think this is gonna happen for Tio. How's Goom's call pace looking? Add solid. 141 heart of the mountain entry. Definitely winnable for Goom's. Wait, T only has 169. What happened? Uh, oh, <laughs> whoops. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> we getting a 174 berry run here? <laughs> I think that might be it for Tio. I think Tio may be done for the day. <laughs> I'm at least curious what Barry that may have been. I will continue, he says in chat. All right. <laughs> Good luck, Tio. <laughs> at this point, if I were Tio, I'd just be watching Gooms right now. That's the only thing I'd be watching. Maybe yeah, he doesn't want to watch. That was Very just about, good what, uh, 45 40 here. So this is definitely 46 4 Xable for Gooms right now. That'll be almost a 30 second PB that's possible if everything goes well. After having already PB'd by 9 seconds earlier today. I was kind of hoping Tia would only have 3 hearts there. That would have been a piece to resistance. Yeah, we might be going from only four runners who've ever gotten 46 before to six now with the this day of the event, considering that both Tio and Gooms are looking to be finishing it up right now. Or, well, Tio already has, rather, with the 46.59 from earlier. No cane skip this time. Taking it nice and easy. Thank you. Understandable. <laughs> it looked like he was going for the setup, but then <laughs> backed out of it. <laughs> Very, very understandable. That should be second place for Gooms. 4X coming in hot. Gonna be getting first seed here. That's huge. 46 47. Gooms. Very well done. And a clutch, too. He started that run. It would have been just a few minutes before the window ended. And secures the UK top two, which is the most important thing. All right, checking back in with uh, the runners on the threshold here of making the bracket. It looks like Seth is less than a minute ahead here with the best possible time of a high 51. Um, so he's going to need to get some golds. Uh, to clutch this out, but uh, Raccoon Gal still on a green pace here, comparing to 51-59. You know, I never thought we'd be under a monarchy again, but here we are with two British kings at the top, so... <laughs> <laughs> we are so back. Oh? Enon? <gasps> no. That's still an improvement. <laughs> Still just barely squeezing by, by one second, GG, and then... They had a one second PB, a seven second PB, and a one second PB. <laughs> Very consistent.
Yeah, Felix entering or exiting summit sub 47 here. This could potentially be a push for a lower 51 to get him back in. Interesting little bit of the leaderboard for anybody taking a look. 18 through 23rd is all US players. What do you know? And then there's a little Canada block right afterwards. <laughs> U.S. mediocrity comes through. <laughs> so true, Dan. <laughs> Holding up the middle of the pack. It just so happens to be the spots that just miss out on the bracket as well. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of oh. funny. That's, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Simplex looking to close out. Uh, potentially over a minute improvement here. Lots of other gamers in core. Oh my goodness, just barely hitting that bumper. Exciting seeing all of our runners on screen here in core at once to finish up the day here. We might have a few more runners that are still continuing runs after this, but we definitely have a big group to finish up with right now. Simplex looking to improve his leaderboard time here by about a minute and a half. Is that also his PB? Let's see. Simplex real PB before the event was an hour, three minutes, 32 seconds. So this will be another PB for Simplex here, bringing his time down to that one hour, one minute and two seconds. Congratulations. GG. I don't know who to watch right now. There's so much going on. So many paces. So much core. We do have Sam approaching the end of the level here, at the very least, coming up on the cassette room in a moment. And looking to be on a comfortable PB pace. Oh, I apologize, not actual PB pace, because his PB is a 58.29, but events PB improvement coming up here for sure from Sam. Yep, and Satellite Sam coming in at a 59 flat to finish out the event, improving his event time by 46 seconds. Congratulations, Sam. Nice to do. Oh, and Raccoon Gal on the bottom left here, having a little bit of a struggle getting through this last room, running into a couple pitfalls. Still oh, seems no. to have a solid oh, chunk of time save no. available to them, though. <gasps> at comparison, I think... Uh -oh. It's still slower than the uh, event time. That is that true. 51 59 comparison. This is cutting it very close for. It can still be an improvement. It's possible and it could matter very much here for receding. There are 51 16 could, best possible it time. It could also matter for getting in because Felix is on a pace. Oh, Felix is in right color. on their tail. Oh and dear. Six, yeah. The, this could matter for who it's actually makes it the bracket or not, then. Yeah, you're right. We may see Tokikumo getting pushed out of the top 16 after finishing their final run. Even if that does happen, Tokikumo did an excellent job getting multiple PBEs in the event here.
And what pace do we have Sev on in the top left corner? This is another potential pace for Sev to be maybe making it into bracket. I think that was I an don't entry. think so. It's... It'd be cutting it close it's because it does depend if Tokikuma white. was within the range or not. Let's see. Simplex with a 51.26, which pushes him up, uh, looks like three spots above Tokikuma. Or Felix. Okay. Oh, who did I say, sir? I think you said Simplex. Oh. Similar name. And <laughs> at a 51.19, I see. It and sure is. Felix, though. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Wow. wow. <laughs> These spots are shuffling just... so much. Raccoon Gal so just puts, scraping by. Puts Raccoon Gal and Temp Felix just in and knocks Tokikumo out. Oh my goodness. Top 17. Meanwhile, 52 Vertal minutes here, after the reset window pace. ended. If we check the bottom right. And Sev, is this also PB pace for Sev or just it sure is. Is, That is oh. big PB pace. Seb almost skipped 52. Yeah, excellent GD's performance today from Savadra. PB for Sev. Unfortunately, just got squeezed out of the bracket stage. But still, very solid improvement for Sev. Congratulations. And Vertle, now in the bottom right. This is looking like potential for somewhere from 10 to 20 seconds of a real PB going on here. Yep. Going for this crazy ultra strat it. again. Oh, lands it. That is so Oh cool my goodness. See. Oh Sticking my goodness. Sticking aggressive till the end. <laughs> what kind of PB we get here, Stay gambling. Vertle? Help throwing Keep gambling. <laughs> Shoutouts to Coral Reef. He cannot improve his position, but this is his fifth PB of the weekend. <laughs> oh my god. 47.16.8. GG Vertle. Wow, this has been such an incredible weekend to watch. So many PBs. It, more than half of our runners have improved their times throughout the course of this event. Even some of the runners at the very top, including Isaac and Call here, again with a five second All Red Barriers world record improvement. Congratulations once more on that. Thank you. This, is, this has just been so cool to watch just from start to finish. That was a tense ending as well for the final bracket spots. All the seeds shuffling at the very last moment. Alrighty, I'm getting word from production that all bracket placing players and players who are close to that time have completed their runs. So we'll be starting to wrap up here, um, but those who are still on their final runs are certainly allowed to finish their times and we'll have their times uploaded um, to the final leaderboard page. Um, but in the meantime, I'd like to make some thanks because this tournament uh, would not have happened without a ton of people. Um, this format is our most involved by far and I'd just like to run over who all made this possible. Uh, first of all, Tio uh, did a ton of general uh, admin and org work leading up to this event. I'd say he was the primary person making stuff happen. Huge shout outs to him. Um, Thank you very Super much, Super Zooper. Tio. Yeah, Super Zooper worked on the back end for our OBS package here, making some changes and improvements, um, just adapting for what, from what we had from the Celeste time trials. Uh, then Flying Ludicolo worked on the OBS scenes, graphics, and restreamed today. Two Kill restreamed yesterday. Thanks for that. We needed a second person this time around, and it's great to have you. Crab uh, worked on the Discord time submission bot again, making some changes uh, for this format. And Sleepy Dan did significant overhaul on the leaderboard, browser sources, and website. Um, if you like that site we've got, that is all thanks to Dan. Uh, it's his little. It's his baby at this point. Uh, he's put a ton of work into that and super thankful for what he's done there. And of course, joining me on commentary, we had M. Sushi, Profnan, Isaac Tay, and Quan. Thanks to all of you for uh, hopping on to talk over this uh, gameplay. Thank you very much for having me. And especially again, thank you to Tio for throwing it back to how the Summer of Arb started. Um, I was trying to spread it around as a bit of a meme, but Tia was the one who really made things happen. So, huge thanks to him for getting the Summer of Arb going. Shout out to Prof for memeing it into existence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was, uh, this has been talked about for a while, and, uh, Tio definitely made this tournament happen. 
And then on the back end of the stream side, we had 10 referees this time, I believe, if I'm counting correctly. Uh, Clearwood, Markers, Nene, Wander, Serena Link, Zeldo, Talia, Sophie Bits, Gabrio, and don't I don't exist. Thank you all for uh, checking our players in at the beginning of the event and keeping up with them as we went to ensure fair play and that times were getting submitted correctly. And of course, those referees uh, worked with Lightning Read um, to deliver sets of players and um, paces to our restreamers. So huge shout outs for that. Um, thank you so much, Reed, for coordinating and making sure we had good streams to watch today. It's a very important role and we got to see so many uh, PBNs because of that. Um, I'm going to quick take a look at the bracket page to see uh, final standings. I think we can get that up on uh, the board for you here soon. Salt. Okay. Uh, flying, you are good to switch to bracket. It should be updated now. I need to refresh the the browser source, but it is good to go. So here we go. Here's our bracket going into the next stage of the tournament. We've got Tio as seed one facing off against Temp Felix. Uh, Gooms. Gooms should face seed no. one. <laughs> my, my bad. I forgot about that. How could I? Okay. There we go. I don't know if it'll update live. Um, there we go. Cool. Tio versus Raccoon Gal, Vertil versus Nova as the seed three, Luca versus Tom, Enen versus Catman, Vapo versus Jimmy, Quan versus Salt, uh, seed eight, Hoofgoose versus Wonder. And yeah, those are all of the eight round one matches, of course, with double elimination. Um, anyone losing in the first round does have a chance to stay in the bracket. And this will start next Friday. So that is the. 11th of August, so not far from now. Make sure to follow the channel if you'd like to get live notifications and join our Discord, where we'll have upcoming announcements posted there as well. And thank you everyone for watching and hanging out. Yeah, this was awesome. Time. So excited to see the next phase of this tournament. A by raid incoming. Let's go. One of the original Arb goats we will be visiting shortly. And of course, shout out to Isaac for dominating on, at the top of the leaderboard with the 4507. Sad to not see you in the next stage, but I hope you had fun this weekend. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you for hosting. Yeah, good luck pushing for 44 in the future. Bye, everyone.